You're watching a BASS presentation. Good morning and welcome to Bassmaster Live. Welcome to South Carolina. Welcome to the St. Croix Bassmaster Open at the Santee Cooper Lakes presented by Seven in Clarendon County. South Carolina, what an incredible, legendary fishery we are on today for the third open event. First, third St. Croix Bassmaster open event of the season, the second in Division I. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. Ten are left out of our original field of 223. These ten have pushed their way through, and Chad Grigsby, who guides here on this lake, showing some local knowledge there and flexing some local strength. So far today, he's already got a five-pounder, five-and-a-half-pounder in the boat. Uh, Kyle Austin, I'm sorry, Kyle Austin is our local anchor there. Chad Grigsby has just overtaken him. We see now Kyle Austin having a great tournament as well. Another local angler, Ronnie McCoy in third place. Laker Howell doing great here in South Carolina. We'll get to all of our top ten in just a moment. Let's take you down to South Carolina. Let's take you down to, well, just above the low country here in the Santee Cooper Lakes, Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie. Lake Marion, of course, the, uh, of course, the uh, Inland Sea, they call it, of South Carolina, 110,000 acres as we look at our Unlock the Lake here at Lake Moultrie. Also be some action there. Can't wait to get into all of it for you today. We're going to have a shortened day for you today, owing to weather. Uh, the weather's going to pass through, and uh, the wind change could cause some adverse conditions for travel. Back to the takeoff, back to the check-in, of course, in the later part of the day. We're really looking forward, though, to some good tough fishing for about four and a half, five hours and uh, uh, determine our third champion of the year in the St. Croix Bassmaster Open. So great to have you with us this morning. We're going to be here on Bassmaster.com. Welcome to Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon. I want to welcome our special guest here, the man who won here on the Elite Series last year, Luke Palmer. Terrific to have you here, about to fish your fifth classic. You've qualified every year. That's pretty strong. We are. We feel pretty lucky to have you here. <laughs> I don't know about lucky, Tom. It was, uh, Santee was definitely a special place for me. You know, I mean, I was able to get my first win, like you said there. And, and uh, so to get to come in here and talk about it, it kind of gets me, get to relive those memories and uh, those good times. Yeah, I want to watch some of that footage. Don't you want to watch that one anymore? Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. I mean, he put on a clinic then and he'll put on a clinic now, no doubt. And hopefully we see the 10 anglers on the final day put on a clinic out on Santee Cooper. Like you said, Tommy, a lot of thunderstorms, rain today, a little bit of wind. It's going to be bumpy no matter where you go, Lake Marion or Lake Moultrie on your way or to and fro. But that afternoon, when that sun starts to peak out, maybe the clouds dissipate a little, that's when there's actual big concern. A bunch of wind's going to come in from a different direction, could make it a little rockier, uh, and people thought maybe tornado warnings. But Hank Weldon has said we're going to end it about 90 minutes shorter than we would have just to make sure we get in at least a day rather than canceling the whole thing. Some sort of concerns about tornadoes. Of course, you always have that when you've got a big system like that going through, but there's a look at the, the weather right now. There it is, sort of overlaid on our our map and uh, yeah it's 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 pretty significant yeah. out there there's going to be a good deal of moisture these guys uh, know how to deal with that and of course uh, something that they may catch them better than ever you never know they've been catching them great this week though mike sukon such uh, 20 pound this is the year the 20 pound and 30 pound <laughs> bag in bass fishing yeah you know it kyle austin actually knocked out scott martin's fifth place all-time weight on on day two of 31 eight by an ounce he got him there's a lot of home field advantage in these opens you got Martin went in Okeechobee, Jeremiah Kindy went in on a watch to his homework, and Kyle Austin, he lives right down the road from Santee Cooper Lakes. Absolutely. Well, we've got nine events for the, our EQ, our Elite Qualifying Division. That is a big, big uh, project to tackle. That was seen earlier before the takeoff today. The takeoff is already completed, but we were able to talk to some of the anglers this morning and get a feel for how they're catching. We'll share that all with you as we go through uh, this half hour uh, on Bassmaster.com, and we'll uh, take a quick break, very quick break, and come right back on FS1 for three and a half hours. So it's going to be uh, a lot to watch today. It should be a great day, Tommy. I mean, we're talking about the opportunity of 30 pound bags. These guys took off about an hour ago with takeoff. It was slightly delayed than normal. So an hour ago was takeoff. We're going to catch them, and we'll be able to see the rest of their day unfold. And Kyle Austin said, him and Ronnie McCoy are the two locals sitting at the top of the yeah. leaderboard, uh, and they've been using that local knowledge for a couple key spots that they've gotten right early in the mornings. It's a little earlier today with Kyle Austin, our leader to start the day. Definitely not your uh, typical Santee Cooper no. look at all. No trees in the background.
give me some of that. Look at that spinner bait. It's gone. Started the Oklahoma. day off with a little five and a half pounder. Broke my rod, but it's okay. Give me some of that. Wow, four more. Four more. Right there. I got time, that's all. We'll have to get in. We'll have, we have all day, Tommy, to get into Kyle Austin, but he said the morning is key. The last few mornings, he's gotten in there, caught in his weight or most of his weight and gotten out of there, used the rest of his day in other places. We may see him stay a little bit longer today because there's only 10 and there's nothing to hold back if you want to make the Bassmaster Classic. Kyle Austin got a good start down at Lake Okeechobee. How about a good start at Lake o Okeechobee <laughs> yeah. for this guy right here? <laughs> Scott Martin, my goodness, what a year he's having on the Opens. This was also a little earlier. Scott Martin obviously got a Bassmaster Classic berth already from his win, but he has to fish here. He has to fish at Lake Hartwell. Had a little issue with his mic this morning just because of the conditions were dealt weather-wise, but Scott obviously getting off to a good start. It seems like everybody's going to at least at minimum have somewhere around 20 pounds as their floor today. It's oh, yeah. who is going to threaten 30 pounds that could maybe get this victory told me he's not worrying about points and maybe the most fun tournament he's ever fished. Yeah, already qualified for the classic as we said. Just got to fish the remainder of Division One. This is the part two of it right here. Scott Martin, what an incredible tournament down there. We looked at his what he's caught so far poundage oh, man. Nice, and his average for the season on the opens is just uh, it looks like a fake to me. <laughs> <laughs> average 30 pounds per day at Lake Okeechobee for the three days of that tournament and then he's got uh, 53 pounds and change after two days, so I'll take that average to yeah, the bank. Yeah, I think, I think you would. There's Matt Baby. Adams, also started good down at Okeechobee this year. Stay on her, baby. I don't think little fish live in Santee. <laughs> I just think every time someone sets a hook, it's a four plus pounder. Well, you went there, and everybody figured it'd be, they'd be post-spawn or skinny fish, and man, you, you nearly knocked out a hundred pounds. <laughs> Yeah, we kind of got lucky on the, we got a little bit late spawn that year, and which those fish, it seems like we all said they only spawn in a three week period. You know, there is normally a big wave, but um, you know, a good yes, example, sir. Fork, the, we went there yes, my first year, I caught a nine pounder off a of bed, and we were there, what, first, middle of May, something yeah. like that? Late yeah. April, and, oh, yeah. and they were already spawning in February with us there this year, so I mean, the spawn can last so long on these lakes, and and you know there's fish out in the middle of Moultrie and Marion that they don't know that the water is 65 degrees up on the bank in February yeah. you know it's still 50 degrees out there and then you got like where Kyle's fishing those fish aren't even thinking about spawning no. yet you know they're they're still staging up you know I mean they're gonna they can push back to those flats either side of the uh, the canal there and they can spawn there but these fish are just sitting out there chewing right now. Kyle mentioned that Tommy he said a little bit of current flow. They've been really letting the water go out of Moultrie and you know into the Cooper River and whatnot. And so they've been they've had a lot of rain on Wednesday and then obviously expecting rain today all day. So this this water release schedule and the current flow has been huge for him every morning. He doesn't know how the afternoon would go because he hasn't stayed here that long. And yeah, it's, it's been a, a morning thing. deal for him, hasn't it? He yeah. really won't have an afternoon today, so he, he doesn't <laughs> yeah. need to worry about it, I guess. This thing's cut out for him. Yeah. He's a man on a mission, just finished two spots out in our EQ qualifying mm. race last year, so uh, he's ready to get some back here. You can see how bumpy and how wavy it does get with the wind. And Camera guy's going to have to work it today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And it's a big one. <laughs> Switched it up. The dreaded treble hooks. Woo! One second, let me calm down. <laughs> I think I just broke my boat in half, but I got it. Did it. I'm gonna get back out here real fast. What that is. tree? That tree snuck up on him. I didn't know there was <laughs> yeah, a tree there, neither did he. All of a sudden, he was living there. <laughs> oh, that was chaos. 
It is blowing down there, though, ain't it? They said there the the wind and how much current they're putting through some of these places. It's 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 a lot more than you'd imagine it would be. They've had a lot of rain in recent days. So. Already got a five and a half in the boat. That's kind of. How about that one, number two? Had to get a little closer up towards the bank to catch this one. We just need three more bites to give us a shot at the Bassmaster Classic. And if you can't tell, I'm a little fired up. Let's go. Number two. We can tell, and we'll be reminding you all day long the winner here gains access to the Bassmaster yeah. Classic. I'm flooding the back of the boat on accident. Provided he fishes all of Division One, that's the only requirement there. Oh yeah, and he's he's one of the oh he's an EQer, all EQ the way. guy, yeah. and honestly, it would be right up his alley. Ray Roberts in in March, oh, yeah. like he would he would feel right at home, um, like he does here at Santee a little bit. And Kyle's really one of those guys. He almost you know. I'm not gonna say he almost gave up on the opens, but coming so close last year, such a gauntlet of nine events, it's heartbreaking when you when you fall short of that. And so he wasn't quite sure his outlook on how long he was gonna do it. And then he sees Santee Cooper pop up on the schedule. And he's like, well, I'm no doubt in this year, but we'll see. And so maybe he can knock it out, uh, knock it out this year and be in the Elite Series for years to come. But really using a lot of good wisdom it's hard for a, uh, a local to balance that historical you know luke if you were to go to a ufala oklahoma or a texoma how do you balance the historical and and things like that and for him being as young as he is but as much time on santee he has balanced that very well how do i fish the moment how do i also use some of those key knowledge things that i've learned for years well kind of knowing a backdoor spot like this and there's 220 anglers out there that that makes a big difference you know it allows him to have something to himself where you know the rock pond area where scott's at and potato creek that that's going to get there's going to be boats everywhere so having something to buy himself that's huge well, it certainly worked out that way throughout this entire open season so far i mean separating yourself from 223 guys you you about got to have something special something personal right oh it's it's tough you know and, and these guys are so good anymore you know it's not okay. like you know, 15, 20, 30, guys in there. You got 100 and, was 160 or 70 right EQ guys. I mean, that's, that's a bunch of guys to be able to get into it and really get it stomp. figured out. <laughs> I kind of scared myself. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> Listening to Laker Howell in the bottom left, if you oh, know that shoot. name, Tommy, that is the son of a oh, Bassmaster sure Classic that. champion. We've seen him grow up My before our eyes. A young little kid, and he said, you know, college fishing is great, but when I got out of high school, I just wanted to test myself on a regional and national level. And he said, I've had enough success the last year or two that I said, I'm going to try the opens to try to try to make the Elite Series. That's what I want to do. I want to fish the Classic. I want to fish the Elite Series. And, um, and I want to prove that I can do it and not just my name carries weight for other reasons. And Randy so, Howell is who yes, you're referring yes, to as his yes. dad, of course, the 2014 champion there at Gunnersville, where uh, the family lives now, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to see Laker out here and doing so well. Is he down in the, uh, the hatchery? hatchery? Yeah. Yes, sir. Got our first look at Dakota Ebear. Certainly carved out a place for himself in the world of bass fishing over the yeah. past three or four years. Last one to sign up for all nine opens. He did so two weeks before Okeechobee. Said, I want to change my career path and make the classic, make the Elite Series, and boy, after three events, Tommy, he is second in EQ points, exactly where we thought he'd yep. probably be at some point in the season. 31st at Okeechobee and 13th at Lake Washington. <laughs> That's the male. Dakota, a product of the College Series, fished for Carlton State there in Texas. Mm -hmm. He makes his hay around the Sam Rayburn region. Take a look at Matt Messer, winner last year. Yeah, St. Croix stay Bassmaster Open. Gosh, it's a good one, too. Please stay on there. Come on, big girl. Come get in this boat, please. Luke gets to eye up one of his competitors at the Bassmaster Classic this right. year. Easy now. Easy now. Easy, baby. 
stay down. Don't do that jumping. Gosh, that's a big one. Oh, oh, Come on. I'm really kind of wishing I'd have Come signed on, up baby. for something. <laughs> like I'm, I'm missing out. Everybody's like, why aren't you going? I said, if the classic wasn't the next week practice, I said, you bet I'd be down there. Cause just, I just enjoy oh, fishing life. You know, some places you just connect with, and I've had a good tournament every time I've been there. So mm -hmm. I'd probably bomb this one. You know, <laughs> so Lord, that's an eight pounder. Right there. Come here and open your mouth. How's that to start today? Number one's out of the way, baby. Let's go. Number one and a half. No that's, a, that's a fish that's... and a fish and a half for, for a normal limit. Hey, we saw him get off to a good start on that final day at the Choke Harris Chain when he ended up winning it, Tommy, yeah. on Bassmaster Live, and so this could bode well for him. Dangerous creature for sure. He also had a good start, 34th place down at Okeechobee. Get things on track, but uh, yeah, he's got that classic on his mind. How can you not have <laughs> two it starts two weeks from today? Fishing starts. So think about that, Luke Palmer. I, I'm ready. <laughs> I, I think am, you are I'm more than ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's the unofficial leaderboard. Kyle Austin on top, Matt Messer, Scott Martin, Chad Grigsby, Ronnie McCoy, and so forth. We'll take a break and we'll come right back. Don't give up. Discover the Dakota Lithium DL Plus 135 amp hour battery. With dual purpose 135 amp hour deep cycle capacity and an impressive 1000 cold cranking amps, this innovative battery is equipped with even heat technology, allowing charging even in temperatures below 32 Fahrenheit and boasts power gauge Bluetooth connectivity for real time monitoring. Dakota Lithium, engineered to power your passion from bow to stern. Our SV spool design is made with one thing in mind, casting control. Whether it is casting lightweight baits, skipping, pitching, or casting into the wind, the Tatula SV reels virtually eliminate backlashes when set properly. Now with our groundbreaking technology and innovations, backlashes can be a thing of the past. Out here, it takes a certain type. The type who's always the first one out. The type who knows deep down everyone else is just fishing for second. Enter the Apex Series. See more fish. Seize more victories. Settle for nothing less. With unrivaled clarity, it's the top fish finder for the most demanding type of angler. Only from Hummingbird. Every day, we live to serve you. On the farm, our tires work as hard as you do, ensuring a bountiful harvest. We empower your discovery beneath the surface. We stand tall with you to conquer timber. We maximize efficiency in an interconnected world. We help you build the foundation of tomorrow. No matter the job, we know that your success is our success. Because at Maxim Tire, we get the job done. When dawn spreads across the serene waters of South Carolina's largest lake, Clarendon County suddenly turns into a playground. It's a destination for boaters, campers, hunters, hikers, kayakers, bikers, and golfers.
Welcome back to Santee Cooper Lakes, a place of legends. How about a legendary performance <laughs> last year, 2023? This was you, Luke Palmer. What a, what a week. There's, there was things that could go right, and they went really right that week. I mean, I had some, had some hiccups on day one that uh, I almost could have derailed the whole tournament for me. But uh, everything worked out, and I got to crack them rods and falcon mm. rods and uh, do some damage that week. 26-3 on day three and 25-15 on day four. And only only I'm going to catch a limit every day in that tournament. That was that was pretty wild. I mean, not yeah. You know, I mean, just in general, no matter who done it, you don't think just yes, catching sir. limits yes, that sir. hard. I mean, yes, how sir. hard is it to catch yes. five fish a day? Yeah, Santa and Cooper. It, it, it was it was it was a grind. I think on the final day, I think I caught. I don't think I caught but seven or eight keepers. You know, it was and they. Day two or day three, I didn't have it five or six. I mean, it wasn't just, it looked like we just absolutely destroyed them, but it was just, like I said, every time we swing the rod, it was a big one. Oh, man. Already had a top five finish there in your elite career, and just, man, what a, what a capper. This one was your first blue trophy, and I'm sure not the last. I hope not. <laughs> Well, we're just kind of getting started, getting our feet wet today. Everybody's getting their feet wet out on the water today in every other part of their body. But uh, who, how are you going to separate yourself from these 10 really good anglers out there and win the trophy this time around, if you were out there? Oh, man, it, I don't know. You know, the lake has changed so much, even from when we were there last year. Um, the grass is coming back. Uh, Moultrie's playing. It hasn't ever really played as much. I guess there was a few guys down there last year. Uh, I know Matt Robertson was down yeah, there. Yeah, he had the big bag of the tournament yeah. down there. The first um, day. So it, it's, it's changing a lot. You know, I think if the water level wouldn't have fell out last year, yeah. things could have changed drastically because, I mean, even, even in my areas, the water you get close to the, the rim canal and it would like start pulling you down through it so I don't know I don't know what you'd have to do here these guys are I mean it's not saying you kind of get lucky but you need to run across a special tree or two yeah. for it to for it to get hat, get big for you yeah you think about Wednesday's practice day the final half day that they had out there it was pouring down rain like this and then the last two days have been beautiful they've been able to sight fish and now you, your visibility is not there, so you're either going to have to know where those fish were, or you're going to have to have another program like Kyle Austin has with this current flow. Kyle looking for keeper number three. He's already got a seven and a half pound advantage over second place Matt Messer. The top ten's a lot closer in this week than it was at yes, Okeechobee. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's not a, or even the event you were, yeah, well, you won. Yeah. The the deal is is. Uh, Anybody can pop a 30 pound bag this week, Tommy. It just seems like whether they're spawning or pre-spawn, you catch them coming or going. A lot of anglers are talking about the ceiling that Moultrie has. You can catch 30 plus pounds there pretty easy, but you can bomb as well if that water level changed. It looks right now, it's still okay for some. Gosh, grabbing that line. That's scary. <laughs> Let's go. It's miserable out here, but we're still catching this. <laughs> I am turned up. When things are going your way, it's a lot easier. It doesn't, the weather conditions don't bother you as bad when you're catching them. Third keeper for Kyle Austin. Let's get back Man. to Dakota Ebear. Looks like he's done something very similar to what I did. to go. I can't see. <laughs> My hood was in the way and I couldn't even see her. Look at the hook fell out. Oh, thank you, Lord. I literally, like my hood was over my eye and I just reached <laughs> and I fell. <laughs> Thank you, God. God is good. There's definitely a lot more fish catches going on here Man, than there yesterday was our I final day. The oh, no <laughs> doubt about it. The same kind of conditions, though. Yeah, that yeah. storm in the morning mm -hmm. was the X factor. I kind of out. I had 22 pounds, might not make the cut. And the co-angler in front of me, and I look, I should know this, but I don't know the verse to the T, but he said, you know, today was a good day. You know, he said, could have been better, but today's the day to 
has given us, you know, and I sit, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, man, here I am complaining because I have 22 pounds on my head, and I'm so blessed. Here we are out today in the rain, storms, everything else. Man, what else could a guy ask for, dude? Fishing for a living, living my dream, on FS1 this morning for the first time. Man, I'm just so thankful. I, I, I'm thankful for everything uh, and all the people that helped me get here, honestly. Yeah. Great attitude to have, Tommy. Oh, man. Dakota's one to why. We're a third of the way through the open season, but the rest of the year, we oh, will see yeah. him once again. He is right in the middle of this one right now. Almost a six-pounder there to pull himself right up behind uh, Kyle Austin. Kyle still with a good advantage there. Matt Messer, we saw him catch a good one. Scott Martin, Grigsby as well. What are we going to see from Evan Kung, who's our points leader, yeah. unofficially coming Canadian. in here? We'll be with him today, also looking in at another local, Ronnie McCoy, Laker Howell. Uh, has yet to put his first one in the boat. Matt Adams, whom we saw, spent some time with down at Okeechobee. And Parker Guy, yet another South Carolina. So think about this. We're going to top of the hour. We're going to take you right over to FS1, Fox Sports 1, from here at Bassmaster.com. And that coverage will continue for three and a half hours at the St. Croix Bassmaster Open. The Santee Cooper Lakes, presented by Seven. So uh, we look forward to bringing you Bassmaster live over there for a good long time. I think we got some good signs. There might be some fish catching going on. So we're gonna, they're going to catch them. We we're got some right. recent speeding. Luke and all the rest will be back here, and we'll see you at eight. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Welcome to Bassmaster Live. I think we got a good one for you today. Here's an indication of what's going on out there on the lake, the Santee Cooper Lakes. Here in Clarendon County, South Carolina, the third St. Croix Bassmaster Open of the year. We are down to 10 anglers on this final day. The weather, as you can see, is well, it's not what you call Chamber of Commerce weather, but it's good fishing weather, obviously, because they are catching them early out there today on Championship Saturday. 
So great to have you with us. We've got a lot of coverage coming your way. And we've had some terrific tournaments so far. Started out at Lake Okeechobee. The man in the upper right there just blew away the field down there. Had one of the greatest tournaments ever witnessed in the Open's history. Scott Martin, he's in our top ten today. Kyle Austin, top left, is our tournament leader, unofficially, as it stands right now. And he started the day with the league. He is a local with some special knowledge of this area. A very dangerous man out there. We'll be with him all day long. Matt Messer of Kentucky, he's in the top ten. We saw him catch that big one a little bit earlier today. Number one out of the way, baby. And Matt Adams, another giant coming up. Man, we are in the land of the giants. Legendary for big, big bass, especially during the special few weeks of the year. Let's take you down to the Santee Cooper Lakes, Clarendon County, South Carolina, going out of the fabulous John C. Land Sport Fishing Facility here. And Start out with 223 anglers, I believe pros, trying to make it here. Most of them part of the EQ Elite Qualifying Track to try to get into the Bassmaster Elite Series. And only 10 have survived to this day, so they have done something special. These 10 we are going to be watching all day long. There's our pick up there. There's the John Land facility. Now we're going to have a shorter day for you today. They're going to wrap it up at 1 o'clock rather than 2.30. That's check-in time today, owing to the weather going through and looking for some big heavy winds, which will be a hindrance to people trying to get back to the takeoff later today. So everyone's fishing with a little sense of urgency. Uh, I, I think we got a sense of urgency here in the Bass Matters Master Studio, sponsored by Marathon because they're catching him so well. I want to introduce you to our special analyst today. And I mean special. He won the last time the Bassmaster Elite Series anglers were here last year. Luke Palmer of Oklahoma. Luke, great career so far. You're getting ready to fish your fifth classic. We're lucky to have you. You know, Tommy, I'm glad to be here. You know, I love coming down here and seeing you guys and getting the getting the, get in the middle of this. Well, we to love see it the, too. <laughs> get to see the, the real things that go on behind the scenes. So getting to see all these guys just absolutely smashing them at Santee. Kind of gets me to go back to those special memories of there last year. Well, if it ever gets slow, we got some good footage to look at too, right, Ronnie? <laughs> no doubt about it. 25, 30 pound bags. It seems like 2024 is the year of the 20 pound bag where it doesn't mean anything, Tommy, because we've seen some of the biggest weights we've ever seen. But like you said, today it's going to be a little bit of an adjustment period. We have big thunderstorms this morning, a lot of rain, and then the wind is coming from the southeast. It may change this afternoon, and that is why Hank Weldon said, hey, instead of canceling the whole day, it's going to be bumpy. But we're going to send you out there, but before it gets bad, we're going to bring them back a little bit earlier than normal. Mike Such, Sukhan is here with us. And Such, I know you're you're always watching those 20 pounders. We had had 49, 20 pound bags on day one, and you're looking at the weather. Yeah, oh yeah, that's going to rain all day. We're even cutting it short uh, uh, an hour today to bring the guys in when it's going to get uh, a little bit worse. Maybe they can set the records by then. Kyle Austin is uh, on pace to get in our top five. He got in the top five of an individual weight yesterday with 31.8. All right. Well, we have a big, big day ahead of us here. Wet or not, we are going to uh, we're going to have a big, big time. We talked about Luke Palmer, our special guest analyst here today, and what a great, great year he had last year. At the top of the list, this tournament right here, and a special yeah. cypress tree among about yeah. two hundred thousand <laughs> cypress trees out there. Yeah, it was uh, it was definitely one of those things when Baby. things are yeah. going right and. You just you get into the right rhythm. You know, you can, the area that I actually caught them out of in practice, I don't think I caught like one or two fish out of it. I didn't even plan on catching them off trees. I actually planned on catching them on a jerk bait, chatter bait, reaction bait off the end of those eel grass points. That's where I was catching them in practice. I wasn't getting to like four to seven bites a day, but it was that five to nine pound range. So, but as you can tell, that didn't pan out at all. Well, it seemed like a lot of anglers had gas in the tank for the first two days of competition because you weren't even leading when we hit the weekend, but day three was the huge day where you went from not even leading to in the lead by quite a bit, and then you built on it on that final day when storms came in. So the sustainability for your pattern, you got better every day, whereas other people fell off a cliff weight-wise on the weekend. You know, it was, a, it was a little bit cooler in practice, and I think that's kind of what they were kind of backed off out. That's why they were out on the edge of that grass, and then whenever that sun popped out, they, they swam to the trees. And you went to town. It was a great, great day. That is for sure. Let's, let's hoist it one more time. Let's celebrate. This is a celebrated place. Back in the first year of the Elite Series, the record was set here for four days of fishing, 115 pounds. Preston Clark, it has been legendary for a long, long time. Kyle Austin trying to add his name to that. That legend? Kyle Austin was our day two leader. 
He is the local angler, very, very close to qualifying for the Elite Series. And Tommy, this one was circled on his map. He said he's trying to utilize fishing in the moment of what's going on at Santee Cooper, but also using some local and historical knowledge. And this current spot has been key every morning. And this morning, just a couple minutes ago, we got to see him get off to a great start with a five and a half pounder to kick off his day. We're going to see a lot more spinner baiting, lipless crank baiting all day today for, for guys like Kyle. Give me some of that. Yeah, Ronnie, he was inside the top 10 in EQ last year before the final event fell out, just a 12th. I mean, by 20 points, he did make the leads. Caught a five pounder earlier, and then he hooked an even bigger one. Uh, got drove through a tree there, did the cameraman and Kyle, but uh, as you see, everything turned out pretty good. Two over five pounds, Tommy, and where he is, and we'll see a map throughout the day, but this one, diversion can now, otherwise these two lakes are very big and you can be on a spot and not know there's much current. But when you get to some of these neck down places, some of these places mm. where it, it does tighten up the water, you can see how quick it's moving and plus you add in some wind in there, it is uh, a lot swifter than you'd think, but that is why these fish are positioned where they are, not in the spawning mood, but in the feeding mood. It's miserable out here, but we're Watching still catching him on the map the last two days. He, he's starting on the North Shore of Moultrie and going through the canal, hanging around the canal both sides. Let's get back to Kyle live. We live now? Nope. All right, we're live. Kyle, give me an update. Yeah, so uh, it's definitely a lot slower this morning. Um, our problem is we... Uh, the wind's blowing into here, which causes the current to kind of do a circle. And uh, I'm on the first point pretty much where the, where the wind will hit the current. So it's uh, definitely got it messed up a little bit. We have caught three. They're the right ones. They're the ones I would like to weigh in. Um, I'm going to try to stay here for a little bit longer. And if I can catch one more, I feel like I can go catch a, a three or four pounder on a cypress tree today. Um, we don't have a long time. Um, I hit a tree with my boat, so I don't know how we're gonna get back yet. But first off, we're gonna try to catch 25 pounds, make everybody else really sack them up, and uh, go from there. Just hoping for two more bites right here, I know that. Make my day a lot easier. Oh. Well, if 14, 15 pounds in the first 30 minutes is slow, we, we'll take it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think. I'm a little more concerned about him bumping that tree than we thought. It looked like a bump, but it seems like it was a, a pretty hard hit with the current. <laughs> Talking about, you know, I don't know, stress crack. I don't know, water no. coming. I don't know what, but. He told someone immediately after. He, he hollered to somebody, I broke, just broke my boat in yeah, half. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> hopefully it stays afloat. Yeah. Over to Parker Guy, another South Carolina with whole volume of experience here at Santee Cooper Lakes. Yeah, one tree in the background is one that I uh, smacked them off of the first day of the tournament. Ah. <laughs> That's what's kind of scary about these southern lakes though. You could have a 10 pound lead and you're not oh. safe. 100%. You know, that's what's kind of scary. All 10 anglers eligible for the Bassmaster Classic if they were to win. There are a few guys like Parker Guy and like Ronnie McCoy who are only fishing this division. Mm -hmm. And Scott Martin, Scott obviously. Scott Martin, sure. First look at Laker Howell. Good keeper there. Laker Howell. Visited with him before the takeoff this morning. He was just happy to be here. He didn't care about the weather. He's, <laughs> he's happy to be in the top ten, and who wouldn't be? Yeah. Got to get past some good anglers to get here. I think there was only one angler really would be a okay if they did if we did cancel today, and that is Scott. who the leader is. You know, Kyle <laughs> right, Austin. Right. Everybody else wants at least a shot to go out and have a have a stake at claim for the uh, for the win today. Obviously, with the weather. Well, Lakers finished at being in the top 10. I mean, he was 89th in the EQ points, 
and he jumped up to 46, which yeah. is a, a really good climb on one event. This is a in position huge, to make it. Huge flip flop in the standings from our top 10 after two events to after yesterday's competition. Got six new people in the top 10. If you watched our first open presentation five weeks ago from Lake Okeechobee, you saw a remarkable, remarkable day with Scott Martin just absolutely dominating and running away with that victory on his home, on his home field for sure. Lake Okeechobee in Clewiston, Florida, and he, is, uh, he has not let up since. And he's back flipping a bug. Yeah. You know, I mean, almost, I guess he's probably about the same bait he caught him on Okeechobee, Yeah, very actually. close, yeah. He might not have even retied it. <laughs> no, he probably just went back at it. Still using a big rod, big line, and getting to set the hook. A tremendous amount of water coming down, and we're having some problem with some of the microphones out there, but uh, we'll show you something with sound right now. We'll take you back to Lake Okeechobee five weeks ago. First stop of the year for the St. Croix Bass Master Opens. And this was Scott Martin. <laughs> Just one fish at a time, baby. She's Kicked it off with the biggest single day bag in Bassmaster Opens history, 33 plus pounds on day one. He had the lead there. Uh, dismal, you know, 20 something and change, you know, later, <laughs> later in day two. And then another 31 pounds, I believe, on the final day. All equals up to about 90 pounds of bass for three days of competition. And not a secret locals place, a pretty well-known place where he was catching them out of there, but he, he kind of slipped in there unnoticed. Uh, yes. Uh, unwrapped boat, kind of closed without logos uh, the, while us. practicing yes. and getting the first day under the his ninja belt. Mode, he said. Ninja <laughs> mode, right, exactly. <laughs> One big key, and you know this, Luke, is their subtleties. That was a very popular community hole area, but he fished it a little bit on the edge and a lot slower than other anglers. A lot of anglers throwing a spinning rod, throwing wacky rigs, shallow. He stayed maybe a foot deeper, a little on the edge, but slower, and that's why he got a lot more bigger bites than all those pressured fish, maybe smaller yeah, fish. Yeah, he was, he was catching those ones that just moved in. I don't know how we're gonna get back yet, but first off, we're gonna try to catch 25 pounds, make everybody else really sack them up, then uh, go from there. Just hoping for two more bites right here, I know that. Make my day a lot easier. Oh. Kyle Austin, the right here. man on a mission. Last year he fished the EQ series. That's the Every elite qualifying. That's the pathway to the top tour in bass fishing, the Bassmaster Elite Series, yeah. and just fell two positions short in the points race there. So it's, oh man, he's having a good start. Although he says it's slow. <laughs> Not a big one, but we'll take it. We're gonna try to boat flip this one. The championship's gonna do it. Not a big one, but it'll do. That, like he said, first goal is to catch a limit. He's already got three over four pounds, two over five pounds. He can just fill a limit from here. He's got all day long to maybe, maybe go sketch, catch a four yeah. pounder on a tree somewhere else and pull up. How much was, how far was he in the lead? One pound, just one pound. So from one yeah. to 10, it was, yeah. yeah, eight pounds. Is it eight pound? I didn't know that much I thought, I thought. That's just, the way it stands right now. That's our unofficial leaderboard. Kyle Austin on top there, Dakota Ebear of Texas. Really, really exciting fisherman. You'll enjoy watching him work today. Matt Messer from Kentucky. Young angler Matt Adams. Martin, we saw a little bit of Scott already in Laker Howe. We'll be right back.
Mother Nature may be tough. I'm tougher. I'll take you where chaos is the cost of entry, where the fish are worth the fight. If you ask me, the bigger the question marks, the better the quest. Discover the Dakota Lithium DL Plus 135 amp hour battery. With dual purpose 135 amp hour deep cycle capacity and an impressive 1000 cold cranking amps, this innovative battery is equipped with even heat technology, allowing charging even in temperatures below 32 Fahrenheit and boasts power gauge Bluetooth connectivity for real time monitoring. Dakota Lithium, engineered to power your passion from bow to stern. St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Santee Cooper Lakes presented by Seven is sponsored by Toyota, by Nitro Boats, by Dakota Lithium, and by Humminbird. Just really getting started here, still in our first hour of fishing. On a shortened fishing day today, owing to the weather, we'll be wrapping it up. Check-in time is not uh, 2.30. It's going to be 1 o'clock today, Eastern Time. There's the John C. Land facility and this incredible incredible complex of lakes, two of them. Moultrie to your right on the bottom and giant Lake Marion on top. Always been big bass destinations, especially this time of year. I'll show you some footage and start out with Laker Howell. This is from earlier this morning. Laker Howell into our top 10. Only 10 anglers left on this championship Saturday. Laker Howell, if you know that last name, he's son of Randy Howell, Bassmaster Classic Champion. He says, hey, I didn't go the college fishing route, guys, but I've really tested myself in Alabama, which if you test yourself in Alabama, you test them all over the, you know, some of the best anglers in the world are in that state. He said he went regional to step it up to a national level, and he said, now I feel like I want to try to make the Elite Series after what he's proved to himself the last two years and fishing the EQs, all nine opens, and, uh, really improved his standing in the points race after this event so far with the top 10, but got a chatterbait going, got some moving baits going down in Moultrie in the hatchery today. He actually took the route that I did. You know, the college was, fishing was kind of started whenever I was in college, but you know, that just wasn't my feeling. I was still fishing team tournaments with my dad, so it was, uh, you know, that was that was my route. Yeah. You know, it's, I felt like that it was better acclimated for me to go fish the team tournaments, fish some uh, solo tournaments to kind of get your feet wet and fishing against those guys that got 15, 20, 30, 40 years of experience. Oh, yeah. Going against them felt like that was a tougher route somewhat for me. And Laker Howell, by the time he was 10 years old, had been to every major <laughs> fishery in this <laughs> yeah, country yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that, that's got to help a little bit oh, too. I, I guarantee you. Oh. Yeah, there's lots of different ways to, to, to make your goals happen. Yeah. It's hard to remember sometimes back in your childhood certain things in history, but I guess if he did take good notes when he was a kid, he'd remember a lot of these lakes and know, you know. <laughs> Looks hey, like I maybe remember, he did. I remember yeah. what, you know, remember what this what goes down on this lake or yeah. what I should prepare for. 
Well, we used to have to get up at, on Saturday mornings and watch Bassmaster, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. and tape it on VHS so they can just pull it up and watch it anytime they want to. Now. That's right. Kyle Austin on the left there is a local here. Sandy Cooper guides here, as a matter of fact. Circled this one on the calendar. Obviously, it's his home lake, but there's he circled it for two reasons. One out of excitement, one out of nervousness. You never want to fall flat. If, if Patrick Walters didn't have his worst finish of the year last year on his home lake of Santee Cooper, he wins AOI going away. But he has his worst finish of the year here. And that was the one thing that Kyle Austin said, I do not want to struggle and bomb on my home lake. And that has not been the case at all. In fact, 72-7. Such unofficially with only four fish, I believe that 72 pounds seven ounces has him right below the top five all time One in weights. One more fish, and he yeah he said he uh, gets in our top five opens total weights, and if it's a good fish, he's in the fourth spot. At 24-7 on day one, at 31-8 for the biggest bag of the tournament so far on day two. I texted him late on Wednesday night. I said, Kyle, give me your winning weight prediction and your top 45 weight prediction which top 45 receives a check in the opens and so he said 30 to 34 pounds to get paid and he said 74 to 78 to win so i would say that this local is about spot on when it comes to that top end weight of 74 to 78 because he's just below that mark right now and then 45th place tommy 37 pounds it was on uh way above that expectations people were thinking yeah. Maybe I can get, you know, 15 to 16 a day will get me paid. Not at mm. all. 18 and a half a day barely got you paid. That tells you how good this fishery really is. Oh. You know, we thought it we thought it showed out when we were here, but you can just I really think that grass coming back and getting grass is the biggest player everywhere we go. You know, if a place has got grass and then all of a sudden it goes away, it's like the fishing's not as good, but when that grass initially starts coming back and it's like the population explodes, or just like maybe every fish in the lake goes to that grass, but it's pretty neat. You know, Toledo Bend hadn't really had as much until these last couple of years. It's really started coming right, back. Right, right. Look how the weights went yeah. there. I mean, which not all those fish were associated with grass, but, mm -hmm. you know, it does help their spawning and stuff like that for their babies to hide. We talk about both these anglers here trying to make it into the top nine. EQ points during the course of this year. That race is on. In fact, we're almost a third of the way done with it right now. The man in the lead as we start this day in official EQ, Tackle Warehouse EQ standings, is this man from Ontario, Canada, Evan Kung. Tommy's had such a great start to his season, a 17th at Okeechobee, ninth at Washita for the second event and came into today in sixth place of this event. Only three anglers. We always talk about can you come back from a bomb, a hundred plus place finish, only if the top nine allow you. And there was big slip ups this week. So Evan Kung's able to jump out to a 21 point lead over Dakota. Eberry's fishing today. Matt Adams also fishing today. Another 20 something points back in third. Mike Sermon barely missing the cut in Easton Fothergill, who has almost made the first two top tens of the year. Uh, had, a, had a little bit of a slip in the 80s this week. Got Andy Newcomb, who was a big player last year. EQ situations and uh, four more. That Those were the standings to start today. Yes. Official standings to start today. You do see a live tracking of that on on bass track yes on uh, bass that's not official though that's yes. not official okay and right. there's and there's really just a little bit of movement with three or four of our top 10 and the points fishing today just a couple points will be allocated out but when we looked at it we talked about those top 50s how many top 50s can you get in a year after three events tommy counting today is being mm -hmm. done basically only three anglers remain who have got a top 50 in all three events and that is our top two evan kung and dakota ebear and then Cody Meyer, who's an eighth, has put three finishes from 31st to 45th together. So very, very consistent. And Cody Meyer, is that the yeah, same Cody Meyer? That is the same yeah. Cody Meyer that we expected yeah. to prosper. Yeah. He is doing that. <laughs> yeah. And we haven't even got up north yet. No, we hadn't had then, that uh, part of the schedule yet. We all. throw that spinning rod in his hand, things get mm. the a lot, lot of movement in our top 10 on the EQ standings. Six different guys were in it from the, from the second event. Last year there's only two, and so and and last year seven guys who were in our top ten 
stayed there through the rest of the season. Yeah, they really Made didn't slip all year. Ronnie McCoy, I guess, is the senior member of our 10 who are out there <laughs> fishing today, and I mean that in a good way. Yeah. A lot of experience. He's won some, some BFL tournaments and uh, a local here, another one of our locals who is fishing this division only. This I messed up, Tommy. I thought he only signed up for this event because I didn't see him on the Okeechobee leaderboard, and he said, I don't blame you for not seeing me. I was pretty far down there at Okeechobee. <laughs> yeah, we didn't won't mention the number, hot. but he wasn't pleased with it, I don't think. But, but uh, if he was to win today, he would be eligible for the Classic because he is fishing the first one he did, the second one here, and then the next one for this division is in his same state at Hartwell. But McCoy said, uh, I really feel undeserving if I was to win and make the Classic. To be able to line up at the Classic with, with some of the guys I watch all year on the Elite Series, uh, and I'm just, I'm just a regular old guy, I would feel undeserving, and even, oh. even with a win, and he was super humbled to have the opportunity to make his dreams come true and fish with BASS and maybe the Classic. I think he'd take it, though. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you can't win the Classic, Ronnie, if you're not in the Classic, so. He's 59 years old. Yeah. Ronnie McCoy. Lamar, South Carolina, just up the road. I'm in the year of the local with uh, Scott Martin blowing doors at uh, Okeechobee and Jeremiah Kindy at Lake Wachita. Now Kyle yeah. Austin here. And they used to be the plague. If you're the local, you might as well not even sign up. Yeah. You know, it's like. Yeah, it, oh yeah. It, it was, it was, I mean, it's not turned, turned, it's it's completely, completely turned around. It has. Yeah. Um, Remarkable. I talk, I met Kyle, I think, last year or year before last. I met him at Patrick's house. We stayed there. Yeah. And then I was, when we were uh, waiting to take off and make the Ozarks, we kind of had a fog delay, I think, on day two. Uh -huh. I was back in there and we was chit chatting, and he was talking about catfishing at Santee, not worrying about the bass. I said, Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> so he was more worried about the catfishing than he was bass fishing, so hey, I don't understand that. He is a not only a bass guide at times, but he is a, a big time catfish guide on Santee Cooper. And actually, before the cutoff, you know, a month or two ago, he was out in his, you know, they, they catfish guide in big pontoon boats. And even though he knows all the, the routes to take navigation wise, hit a tree, knocked his boat motor off of his boat. What? And he said, Whoever wants to ask me on where to go to drive safe at Saint, don't ask me because I did not see, I did not know that tree was there. So you can know all the trees, but I guess a new one popped up. They, yeah, that place is very treacherous. Yeah, it's, I definitely have scared some marshals and camera guy boats with it, Santee, because you just, it's either you run it or you idle it. And uh, I don't like idling very often. Time is money. Can't see it, can't hit it, right? Yeah. What was that Biff always said? If you, if you, if you can't see it, it ain't there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, have really I don't think he had very many lower units <laughs> in his line career either. Chad Grigsby in the lower right spent some time on the Bassmaster Elite Series 2015 2016, working to get back into it. The Minnesota angler. Would still love to fish in the this Bassmaster so Classic. He's got a things, different perspective on it as being a successful angler throughout, you know, twenty something years of a, a fishing career. But still, the Classic is something that keeps people awake at night. You know, so guys that are like in the very top, within the top three or four, they only have like three or four rods on their deck. Hmm. Got it dialed, yeah. dialed in. I mean, now what does that mean? You, that means you're dialed in? You're, you're dialed. You know what you're going to go do. Like when I was at, when I done good at Santee, I had six rods on the deck. Four of them had the same exact bait on them. <laughs> I mean, that, that way it was just, to me, at Santee, you don't have to have a lot of stuff. You know, I mean, you can, you can stay pretty consistent with your rod choices and what you need. You can go with your five flipping sticks or you can pick up five spinner baits. You know, that's what's kind of nice about that place. Well, confidence matters, counts for a lot. And of course, there's a young man with it right there. Kyle Austin sitting on top right now with a, a 10 pound lead as it stands right now. But it's, it's a, there are always big leads on top early on in the proceedings before everyone gets a limit. And no one among our top 10 has a limit in the bag yet. We'll be right back. SV spool design is made with one thing in mind, casting control. 
Whether it is casting lightweight baits, skipping, pitching, or casting into the wind, the Tatula SV reels virtually eliminate backlashes when set properly. Now with our groundbreaking technology and innovations, backlashes can be a thing of the past. Out here, it takes a certain type. The type who's always the first one out. The type who knows deep down everyone else is just fishing for second. Enter the Apex Series. See more fish. Seize more victories. Settle for nothing less. With unrivaled clarity, it's the top fish finder for the most demanding type of angler. Only from Hummingbird. Every day, we live to serve you. On the farm, our tires work as hard as you do, ensuring a bountiful harvest. We empower your discovery beneath the surface. We stand tall with you to conquer timber. We maximize efficiency in an interconnected world. We help you build the foundation of tomorrow. No matter the job, we know that your success is our success. Because at Maxim Tire, we get the job done. Today, it's a huge regular season finale on Fox. First, 10th ranked Creighton takes on Villanova at 2.30 Eastern. Then at 5, 8th ranked Marquette battles Xavier. And in primetime, 2nd ranked UConn faces Providence. It all tips off later today on Fox. Tournament time is looming for college basketball. And boy, we got a big time tournament going on right here on Santee Cooper. St. Croix Bassmaster Open is in by seven. Whoa. Third open of the year, second in Division One. This was the first. This was the first one in Division Two that happened yeah. in between. This is Jeremiah Kennedy. This was another story of local dominance. Jeremiah Kennedy from right up in the road uh, in Benton, Arkansas, from Lake Washita, uh -oh. uh -oh. up in the mountains, absolutely took over this tournament. He's got it, 16 pounds of seven. Ounces. You were in this event, Jeremiah Luke. You're fishing Kennedy. in that it's Central Division, Division Two. What was it like at Washita? Because it was, it was summer fall and winter all and spring somewhere in there all three days of the tournament uh, it, it was it was a lot of fun you know practicing at lake i'd never been there um so it, it was neat you know and i just didn't adjust i was when you're fishing the opens you're looking to do one thing for me and that's when to make the classic you make some hard-headed stuff and that's what i was doing real hard-headed and didn't didn't adjust well, let's get out on the water with chad grigsby caught one earlier to get an update now I don't know if it's affecting the bite, it's affecting where I can fish. So I guess you could call it that. Just that, I mean, we'll stumble into them. It, it's just uh, the area I really wanted to fish, it's, it's not good. I mean, it's just, it's impossible to fish. You just can't, there's rollers coming in on it. So we'll come over here where it's, looks like the wind isn't blowing when you see it on the camera, but it really is blowing. So we'll go catch some up here, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's blowing mm -mm. at all. 
Chad was one who was very excited about the weather today because he wasn't going far. He's not going to Moultrie. He's not going, you know, to the south side of the lake. He was going to the north side right around, you know, to just a little west of takeoff and was excited that, hey, I can get to my fish. But obviously that wind slightly changes maybe from the southeast or southwest, and now it's hitting his area. We're going to go skim some trees, uh, and, and if we run across a four or five pounder, we're going to be in good shape. So, see if we can get it done. We're about to uh, make a little move. Go back to my stomach grounds in Upper Lake, because it is rough back there. So, uh, I don't know. It's a crazy day. We'll see if we can get it done. Kylie, only one of our ten with four keepers in the box. That's, uh, that's how you stay in the lead. Great to see that his boat's working. Yeah, yeah, it's flowing. Oh, good. That's, that's a good thing. Not and by boat error, but by either. wind and current error. Blew him into a tree earlier in the middle of a five pounder, but all is well because he caught it. Gosh, it looks so good, that lake does. Everything looks fishy. It's like, where do you even start mm -hmm. out on that place? Because you can just, you can literally well, just I've been catching them all week, blow the boat and go fishing. Go off troll motor and never pick it up. Hammer, half ounce. It's just, uh, obviously it's a vibrating jig, but they're spawning up around this grass and cypress trees and I mean they're just when when you if you can roll it by one they just I mean they are mad at the world and the ones I caught yesterday had my hands full you hang that grass it, it almost feels like when you catch one they don't really even bite it because they're spawning I mean they're obviously biting it because they don't have hands but it just gets mushy, just like you're hung in grass, and then all of a sudden it takes off. So you'll see me set the hook a lot. I mean, just pulling, because you, you, I can't tell if it's a fish or grass, so just hopefully we get five of them that aren't grass and catch another 29 today. That looks like an extreme buzz bait place. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been fun. I love live scope and all that, but this is bass fishing here. Ooh, little dig. One point three. Now, Luke Palmer, how did you decide to fish where you finder. ended up fishing in the Sandy Cooper lead event? Thanks, Garmin. You know, I, it was one of those deals that I just kind of, I fished, you know, in practice. It's not a place like you can go graph, you know, and mm -hmm. looks. I'm not a good grapher anyway, but I just kind of, I went around and I, I went in there in pre-practice actually and spent a couple of days looking around and stuff again. And uh, plus prior knowledge, or not prior knowledge, but what do you want to call it? Knowledge from the past. Yeah, past yeah. tournaments. Past yeah. tournaments. You're correct. Um, and have just oh, in the region. Area, yeah, in that area is always good. Yeah, they got plenty of I mean, of if you go look got back for the last 30 years of tournaments, that area stuff. He went and checked out that is just always good. Refuge right and, down the uh, road. And it was it was hard to. It was tough because you don't you don't get a lot of bites and it's to me if you can get a couple bites in the oh area gosh, you got to settle big. down and just go going? fishing because they're going to come you know eventually and you know well, and it, it had everything big. I wanted it had grass it had a couple of ditches coming in there had deeper trees you know Let's and just it was hope there's just a, a just a part, ideal story for that place or a female sitting there. the year before though when I come in fourth what killed me on the final day and I knew this and I told my uh, camera guy Aaron I said if the wind blows out of the north it's not going to be good for me and he said you just caught 33 pounds the day before I said I know but that's going to cool my water off and from the day that I caught mm. 33 and I quit fishing at 1230 that day pretty right. much because I was every tree I was catching a five and a half pounder and it wasn't helping me so it was like you know but uh I backed off of them and that north wind blew in there and it cooled my water off five degrees and those fish vanished. We got Good call. On the yeah. All right, there's our unofficial leaderboard as it stands right now. Kyle Austin started with the lead. He remains in the lead and right now he brings us our Bass Pro Shops top lures. Give me some of that. Look at that spinner bait. It's down. Start the day off with a little five and a half pounder. Give me some of that. Woo! Give me some. Yeah, yesterday uh, I've been catching one of the lipless on a uh, Strike King two tap lipless crankbait. Yesterday they stopped biting it and I just uh, I grabbed this out the bottom of the boat. It had a rust on it, my other one did. And uh, 
First cast yesterday, I caught a six pounder, so. Definitely a key bait change. Let's go. It's miserable out here, but we're still catching big. Woo! Strike King 2 tap. Everybody, everybody forgetting about these free spawners out here. That's what you catch. Don't forget about those tree spawners, would you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kyle Austin mixing it up a little bit, and he said it doesn't, it looks, you know, I'm out in, the, out in the middle, it looks like it might be deeper, but it's just a subtle, slight depression where that current will suck around and... Pretty slow, I got debates. one three and a half pounder, but uh, this wind is kind of hurting my area, as you can see, it's blowing straight into it in here, but... Hopefully I can put it in front of four more good ones. See how we end up, but I don't know. I, it, during practice and the first day of the tournament, it was a lot different. Um, I think there was a lot more fish moving in here. So if y'all are watching, y'all see me throwing up to a tree and sitting there and shaking it for a long time, which in the first day and the last day of practice, I didn't have to do that. It's, I mean, they were biting it as soon as it got in there, but that's part of it. I think they're locking down on the bed, so I think that has something to do with it. So, yeah, we're gonna see if we can put it in front of four more. Hopefully get us a couple big ones. Marker guy from Asilla, Georgia. I know there's a bunch of big ones living in here, so. Parker guy, one of the college fish. We got it three or four or five out of our top 10, either directly affiliated with college fishing currently or in the past, a Parker guy from Emanuel College. Uh, him, him and his partner, uh, I believe, both signed up to fish this tournament. He's fishing this full division to try to make the classic. Not just pelting down. Where Parker Guy is right now, and you can see you, as we look at our map there, this uh, this big, big mass. This uh, front is moving through, and we all know the dynamics of front. You get wind as it comes in from one direction. When it pulls through, it starts pulling wind from the other direction. Yeah, and it looks like obviously it's going up the coast of South Carolina and whatnot when you're looking at this map, but also that wind in the afternoon rotating from the, the southwest or the west pushing the rest of that towards the coast, that's the wind direction that hurts Santee Cooper because of how wide this is. Not how tall it is, but how wide this lake is. And you gotta, you have to run the boat lanes. You can't just run where you exactly. want to on this lake too. That's what makes it rough. We talked to our anglers a little bit earlier about the weather and their prospects for today. And uh, they all had some, a definite plan to deal with it. Oh, okay, we'll get that for you in just a second. Let's get back out to Parker Guy. You can see there's there's four or five different water colors out on Santee Cooper. After talking to some anglers, there are places like Tawkaw Creek that are dirty as can be, and places like maybe Potato that are clearing up, uh, the Brickyard Utahville clearing up some, places like the Hatchery down in Moultrie have a different color of water. And so depending on where you want it, that weather could affect it today. Wind making it dirtier, the rain making it dirtier, some places cleaning up with that the conditions. So it's been an adjustment wherever you're going. Well, again, we mentioned that uh, all our all our anglers of the 10 out there today are thinking about the weather, what was on their mind before they started. Let's listen. How's that start today? It gets nasty out there. I grew up on this lake my whole life and it's, a, it's rough, that's for sure. Honestly, I think I'll be safer than a lot of people because a lot of people's catching them shallow, bed fishing and stuff, and that weather's gonna make it tough on them. And I'm out there Good fishing grass, throwing a trap and stuff, so I should still be able to fish through it better than most of the shallow people. When I found these fish or found this pattern, it was raining, it was on the third day of practice. So I don't think it'll affect me that much. I'm just gonna be, uh, be open-minded and just gonna go out there and fish. It's definitely going to affect a lot of guys. I think for what I'm doing, it should make it better. I don't want to say that and, and not, but it definitely those kind of conditions should make it better. And hopefully, uh, hopefully it comes true. Give me some of that. Kyle Austin, that man on the run right now. He said he's going to have to make some moves during the course of today. 
Caught him very, very early his first two days at that special spot we found him at, but he is uh, on the way to uh, spot number two, and we'll be on the way back in just a moment. center and now that the best trolling motors ever made are even better we'll lead the charge so you can focus on getting them to bite whenever and wherever the fight takes you with Minn Kota you're free to fish on any front discover the Dakota lithium DL plus 135 amp hour battery with dual purpose 135 amp hour deep cycle capacity and an impressive 1000 cold cranking amps, this innovative battery is equipped with even heat technology, allowing charging even in temperatures below 32 Fahrenheit and boasts power gauge Bluetooth connectivity for real time monitoring. Dakota Lithium, engineered to power your passion from bow to stern. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Now we're watching this action here from the Santee Cooper Complex. These incredible two giant lakes here. South Carolina, this time of year, they are just absolutely legendary because that's when the big ones show themselves here. And we have seen a lot of that this week, multiple, I mean, close to 50 20 pound bags on day one alone from our full field out there, but we're down to 10. On this final day, one of the anglers we are following is Laker Howe, having his best start of the year on the Opens. Had a slow start down in Okeechobee, finished 100 points better at, at Washita. If he can do, he's, he's going to do several points better here. He's already assured of that. It doesn't even look like the wind's blowing down there. Yeah. He must what's, have what's the, the He must be in the right area. Well, it's coming from that southeast corner, so if he's tucked up towards that south bank of Moultrie, he could be protected. And obviously with all the rain and running to his first spot, a little mic difficulty, but another good one for him as he tries to carry on the family legacy and make a Bassmaster Classic himself. 
How old he'd, is he? He'd be one of the young. He's a young one. He's a young one. Let me see. 21, 22 years old. 22. 22. Been utilizing a bladed jig. Uh, bruised green pumpkin. A little bit of black and blue. A little bit of green pumpkin in there. He's another one doesn't have a bunch of rods on his deck either. Nope. Yeah. yeah. But Yamamoto, she's kind of committed Zacco to the trailer, and I think he's even mixed in maybe another type of moving baiter, but mostly just that bladed jig. Yeah. His third tournament, and he's getting exponentially better in each one. 163rd down at Okeechobee, 62nd over in uh, Wachita, and now he's in our top 10. <laughs> Scott Martin, our winner at the first stop, his home waters, Lake Okeechobee. Liquor Hal pulled into the top three. Strength of that fish right That's there. That's a big one, dude. Uh oh. Yeah, he hit him That's and a big one. didn't even move when he stuck it. That's a big one. <laughs> Found a blimp. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. <sighs> I think they're coming in here. These are all new fish, guys. <sighs> oh, guys, that's what we need. Dude, how about job, that? Dude. Guys, thank y'all for watching this beautiful showdown at Sandy Cooper Lakes right here in Clarendon County. Doesn't get any better than that right there. Megas, dude. Megas. What just happened? <laughs> hey, what do you hear about all that stuff up here? That's a, that thing. Woo. Dude, it looked like you hooked a stump. I know. <laughs> This fish is beautiful too, man. Fresh, pretty. Seven two. Seven Putter two. Yeah. Oof. That was bigger. Joins Matt Messer in the seven pound club with yeah. Matt's first fish being a seven ten that he weighed. Okay. A lot of the guys will weigh them. It might not be official on Bass Track, but they weigh them to get a good estimate for culling later in the day. So. Oh, another look here, gosh. yeah. <laughs> just, I just tell the story. Honesty. Oh my goodness. As bass fishermen, we're always promoting something, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell y'all, don't buy these. Don't buy them, because it could lead to like strain in muscles. It could lead to like broken ribs. It could lead to broken rods if you don't have good ones. It could lead to broken hearts. Bandito bug. I don't know, man. I don't, this thing's something. There's something special. The other thing that's special, and honestly this thing is super special, that's bait pop on there guys. You know they developed this bait pop for uh, to see your uh, bait a little bit better on sonar, but it has fish formula in it and that's what I'm using it for. A minute ago he saw it, I put it on, the first flip in there, bit it. It works. It works really, really good. This stuff is thick, it pastes, it has different colors, that's like a copper put it on there which is great for like crawdad style baits look how thick that is when they bite it they hold on to it they eat it good and that scent is just coming off so tip of the day bandito bug and some bait pop Ooh, yes it's all good, but what I really like about what Scott did, he went old school on us there. He called this a Santee Cooper Showdown, which is what they call the first yeah. time that the elites were ever here back in t tw almost 20 years ago. Who and won that one? I, that I was uh, Preston, Preston, Preston Clark. Preston Clark. Yeah. 115 pounds, set the record for four days of fishing yeah, that at so that cool. time. Yeah. I pitched it back out there. All it just was tight. Pretty much. Oh, yeah. yeah. I went, yeah. It went. I never felt a bite. I just lifted up. It was tight. I'm like, uh-oh. And people forget. Yes, Scott lives in Lake Okeechobee. That's where Roland Martin made made it famous, and he also has Oklahoma ties. Uh, but Roland spent a ton of time in his life 
guiding at Santee Cooper. Not that that helps Scott anyway, but there is a, a family tie to the roots of the Martins at Santee Cooper because mm -hmm. that's where Roland did a lot of let a, a lot of heavy Absolutely. lifting as he started his elite or his uh, professional fishing career. I hear a lot. Yeah, Roland gave me outrageous numbers of like I caught. 500 10 pounders from Santee Cooper and I think he said 700 over 8 pounds or something or 800 or 1000 or 20,000. He's got another one. That's another one. And number three, maybe. And that's another big one. These bed fishing, they, they wow. just like, they just keep yeah. coming. <laughs> Woo! They call me the exterminator. <laughs> <laughs> We're eradicating them. <laughs> That's the way you want to do it. I think you they call him the, the landlord. He's evicting them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Honestly, the reason that bandito He's book's so good. About to start catching that. Is that baby. big bulky baits? The bigger fish bite it more often. First, Getting throw a little close. tiny drop shot in there, a little finesse worms, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you're going to get bit like crazy, but you're going to catch the males first a lot. I think Roland said, why would I want to fish on the Bassmaster Tournament Trail and leave Santee Cooper because it's such a great place? Turns out Roland made a good decision, made a lifelong career out of it, but Santee Cooper, yeah. that just goes to show you. Why yeah. would you leave when you got him like this? That place has been phenomenal for, oh, since it was that big. Forever. You I, know, I mean, it's, that was the first tournament, uh, one of the first tournaments I ever covered as, as oh, wow. shooting tournament back in 96. So I'll tell you about that one of these days. That was incredible. It was something else. Uh-oh, new leader. New leader, Laker Howell. He just jumped up into third place and got knocked out by Scott Martin, and now he's back on top. We'll fill you in on what happened when we come back. A lot of action going on here at the Santee Cooper Lakes. Our SV spool design is made with one thing in mind. Casting control. Whether it is casting lightweight baits, skipping, pitching, or casting into the wind, the Tatula SV reels virtually eliminate backlashes when set properly. Now with our groundbreaking technology and innovations, backlashes can be a thing of the past. shows you what's below in real time with edge-to-edge -edge clarity and no gaps in coverage. All so you can turn must-watch detail into non-stop action. Only from Humminbird. Every day, we live to serve you. On the farm, our tires work as hard as you do, ensuring a bountiful harvest. We empower your discovery beneath the surface. We stand tall with you to conquer timber. We maximize efficiency in an interconnected world. We help you build the foundation of tomorrow. No matter the job, we know that your success is our success. Because at Maxim Tire, we get the job done. When dawn spreads across the serene waters of South Carolina's largest lake, Clarendon County suddenly turns into a playground. It's a destination for boaters, campers, hunters, hikers, kayakers, bikers, and golfers.
Tim Corey Bassmaster Open going on right now in South Carolina. Hey, two weeks from today, first day of fishing in the World Championship. Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Classic presented by Jockey Outdoors. Grand Lake of the Cherokees for the third time. We went there in 2013, had a great tournament. Ditto for 2016 is a great, great playing field to find the number one angler in the sport in this this tournament like no other, only three days long, but it decides so much and it'll change your life. Uh, we have a very special analyst in the studio today, that is Luke Palmer. And Luke, uh, you're the master of this place, Santee Cooper Lakes, but you're going home to Oklahoma to fish in your fifth straight, and congratulate us on that, five straight classics. I'm sure the grapevine, you live down a little south, but the grapevine is strong there. What's it gonna be like at Grant? I think it's gonna, it's gonna be a fun tournament. Uh, we've we've had a, a lot warmer spring than we normally have at this time of year. Um, doesn't mean that we don't have a snowstorm coming the first day of the tournament or something, but I really think it's gonna be a lot of fun. People are gonna show out. It's. It's the classic, though. The classic is everything for us bass fishermen. You know, we look forward to that every year, and to get to fish it, it's dream come true. But to win it, set your lifelong goal, and you're set up in stone, man. And uh, I want to be set in stone on the classic. All country. right, I, I would count you among the favorites for sure, maybe the favorites. And the... may see him on camera day one at the classic too. No pressure. Why wouldn't we do I, that? Man. Why wouldn't we do that? <laughs> Absolutely. We but he do. said snow. Whoa, no, it's not. Not Second at all. Second day of practice, it's going to get down to 39 degrees though in the morning. So that's about oh. the coldest for the whole week. Oh, Other really? days, it'll get up in the mid 60s every day. There's oh, a cold front. This Luckily, the, the second 70s. day of practice is a week before the tournament starts, so yeah, that's yeah, that's a, a good not, problem to have. You get to go just drive around and <laughs> drink hot chocolate all day. <laughs> they like kind of find the holes in the grass. It it's Most big. Of the holes have but it's not very wide, so you're thinking, oh, I'll just go down here. I'll just go down here, and all of a sudden you're 30 minutes into it. Like, so seems gee, like I've caught know, two new ones so neat. far. We'll see what happens. But we need three We need three more six to seven pound fish to have a shot at this thing. That's what, that's what we need. Santee, you can dang sure catch three more six, seven, eight, nine oh, nine pounders. You know, and it, this guy just caught a seven two moments ago. Kyle went from big rod to spinning rod real quick. And that's been his, you know, game plan throughout the week is he said he checked the same tree six times yesterday just because it is one of those trees that always holds a fish. He said also this week, you know, with the grass influx, a lot of eelgrass. Matt Messers mentioned that there's eelgrass around where he's fishing, but there's hydrilla in one of the ditches on a flat. So there's a couple different varieties, but Kyle said there's so much eelgrass that he's had to seek out trees this week that maybe have worked in the past, but don't have grass around them now. There's some good trees that now have grass around them, and it's changed the way those fish position on trees. So he's looked for trees that maybe don't have as much grass around them so that the fish are only there for one reason, and that's the tree. They don't have a lot of other cover to swim to. Laker, Laker Howell's weight, 72 pounds, 11 ounces, is tied with Chris Lane's that stands fifth all-time total weights in Open's history. And it ain't over with yet. Mm -hmm. No. no, no, no. Well, I mean, we can here. rewrite the whole script almost. <laughs> and we could update that Such with another two and a half pounds for Kyle Austin and get him at 75 even because he said, his cameraman during the commercial break said they, they weighed them, you know, more uh -huh. accurately in the, and that he probably has four for 19, not four for 16 and a half. So we're working on getting our unofficial leaderboard updated a little bit, but that'll give him the lead again, just by a little bit. Next to pass is Ben Milliken's Toledo Ben, 77-14, and then Corey Johnson, 78 even, 2021 St. Lawrence. So we could climb into the top three. Real easy. Get second, you gotta beat Swindles 80-13 at Toho. Long the time this ago. year, it's like we're at the St. Lawrence River every tournament. It's exploding. Like, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's not like, you know, we used to, if you caught 15, 16 a day, you were, you were right around the cut for sure. Now, if you don't catch 18 to 20, you. Yeah. <laughs> it's a different world. It's, it seems it's like. crazy. Matt saw him catch a good one earlier. Hooked up again. I don't know what that is. There's about no way it's a bass. 
whatever it was, absolutely. Dang it! Oh, I don't know if that's a pass. I have caught that some gorilla. Fast. There's no way. Blue cats down there on a chatter bait and stuff mm. in the foot of water. Definitely just reeled in something, snagged it or something. Looking for some slime or a scale or something <laughs> on your <laughs> to make you feel better about it. It's something that says, hey, this wasn't a bass, man. Or it was a 14 pounder, one of the two. Yeah, that's the. <laughs> also a good sign. <laughs> Don't have a whole lot of time today. Seems like they've been pulling up pretty good around like 1 o'clock. And that's what time we got to be in today. So I don't know. We're still. Still gonna fish it, cause it's what's got me here. And I already caught a seven this morning in here, so it'd be kind of crazy to leave it. Just gonna have to grind it, and see what happens. Matt Messer reminding us that we're, if you're just joining us, they're fishing a, a shortened day today due to the weather. The wind expected to pick up and be problematic. People trying to get back to to the check-in this afternoon. Originally at 2:30, but now it's at one o'clock Eastern time. And there are some lakes like the Great Lake, it's just hard to get a three or four day tournament achieved without a weather delay of some sort. We had the elite that Drew Cook won. We had a day that was postponed and we moved it to a Monday so we could do a four day tournament. That final day of your victory, it was worrisome. We got out there, the storm hit, and then and then it would kind of got better at the end of the day, but that mid portion of the day was worrisome. <laughs> and uh, everybody was like, well, I guess I want to go, even though Luke's probably going to throttle him again, but like, I, <laughs> that's our only shot of winning is if we go. Yeah. And then there's been a ton of three day tournaments that have turned into one or two-day tournaments because they just, yeah. it's either been extreme winds or the storms here. So would you say, I think Lake Marion is the biggest lake in South Carolina yes. and, and one of the biggest lakes. One of in, the biggest man-made lakes in, in America. In America, yeah. Yeah. but then you have an, a whole nother lake attached to it that people can go to that's not just as big, but it's a, it's it's a, a big pretty one. big lake yeah. as well. Yeah, like we said too, you can't just take off across these lakes. No. You have to run <laughs> right along the dam. You have to run boat lanes because it's solid forest oh, yeah. out there that's just under the water that can uh, ruin your day real quick. I know when we came in the final day, I came in a little bit early because I was like, <laughs> I've got a pretty big bag. Like I, I'm gonna, you know, I'm just gonna, I'll go fish Plain around the safe. ramp. Yeah, and I think I came in 1:30, and I remember going across and hitting the middle of the boat lane, and there was a boat coming. And I went down in the swell, and they did too, and there was no boat either way. You couldn't see them, oh, they couldn't see me. I mean, it, and it was gassing, but how I was running, you could at least run the trough, but mm -hmm. it was it was big. Like, I was like, this is Not almost Great Lakes. No, yes. no. Scott Martin Little. looking for number four. Oh, about the same size as keeper number three. Maybe a little less. Luke, tell us the story about a uh, an unexpected run you had to make before the morning of a takeoff of an Elite Series event at Santee when you win. I'm not going to put my camera guy Aaron on blast at all, but <laughs> but <laughs> Aaron, <laughs> but Aaron, no, we were we stayed. We actually I was camping then, so we camped in Patrick's Walters' backyard, pretty much, which was about a 45 minute drive around by, the lake. Around yeah. the lake, no big deal, you know. And we get there, and I'm. I know how takeoffs go and stuff, so I'm not like super fast to get there. I'm boat 75, whatever. And uh, some we're sitting there lollygagging around, getting our boat ready, and he's about to dump me in. And he goes, "Just a small one, uh, same kind of deal." You got a the GoPros? I'm like, "What do you mean?" He said, "My backpack that has the GoPros is at Patrick's house." <laughs> oh. I'm like, oh my gosh. And we asked four or five people because we have to run the GoPros for our I think there's two, there's three of them in there. You know, we saw and for my YouTube. And I'm like, oh my gosh. We asked four or five guys. No one's got an extra one. And at seven, or at, you know, we took off at 7.30. At 7.05, we take a cross the lake to Patrick's house. I'm talking. Got to go to the go. south side. We didn't go to the <laughs> boat lane. I said, put your life jacket on and don't look up. And I said, hold, <laughs> brace for impact. We ran over there and back. I dropped Aaron off, picked up my Marshall, and Lisa called my number as soon as I got in line. <laughs> we took no off. Big deal. It sounds funny event. now. It, yeah. it was funny. It was and then I go, and Aaron's watching Bass Track, and I don't catch a fish till 1.30 that day. He thought my life was over. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> it all turned out. Hey, we are far from over right here. 
Absolutely. It's going strong here at Santee Cooper and more catching on the way. Discover the Dakota Lithium DL Plus 135 amp hour battery. With dual purpose 135 amp hour deep cycle capacity and an impressive 1000 cold cranking amps, this innovative battery is equipped with even heat technology, allowing charging even in temperatures below 32 Fahrenheit and boasts power gauge Bluetooth connectivity for real time monitoring. Dakota Lithium, engineered to power your passion from bow to stern. Thirty-one pounds and eight ounces, and Kyle Austin moves into the lead. So I'm from Ridgeville, South Carolina. It's about 20 minutes to Lake Moultrie and 30 minutes to Lake Marion. I grew up. Or literally, we have a camper right behind us back here. It's been permanently there for probably 20 years now. So, grew up coming to the lake. I've been obsessed with bass fishing since I was a kid. Spent a lot of time out here, and a few years ago, I actually quit my nine-to-five job to pursue the Bassmaster Opens as well as start my own guide business. I run uh, catfish charters as well as bass charters and uh, so I spent a lot of time out on the lake it would mean a lot to, to win in this parking lot right here. One of our attractions here the Tackle Warehouse Dr. Talk. Al Austin giving us a little bit more details about his story which is an interesting one out here and of course it's been a more than interesting week for Kyle. Started the day his final championship Saturday with the lead. Here's the man in the lead right now though. First man to a five fish limit Laker Howell. You know, he, I've been down kind of in the area that he's fishing. Oh, got him hooked up again. Uh, and it's just like a big, 
giant flat with a few little ditches and depressions where those fish will actually kind of set in. I mean, you can just Real see. Real subtle. Very just a subtle. Foot, a foot mm. change, maybe. Yes, if that, on some of it. So it's it's kind of a, it's a neat place, you know, and it's all sandy, good, prime, mm. hatchery places for the fish to spawn. Like we mentioned with the weather this morning, the heavy rains, there's been some cameras and microphones that have gone down throughout the day just with the wetness and moisture and currently not able to hear Laker how oh man. but oh, that is one that you want right <laughs> that's there <a> <laughs> oh, get rid oh, of a man. 112 wow yeah that's a that's a cull that is a big cull right there I wish we could bring you we can't bring you the sound right now we're working on that but man oh man what a moment leading the tournament something like that shows up I can't tell if he's excited and he's about to cry or yeah. if he's <laughs> wet and <laughs> understandable. <laughs> I mean, if I don't blame is. him. Good lip reader there. He said, oh my God. <laughs> he said <laughs> something along the lines of, that's a big one, let's go. <laughs> yeah. do, do you think he's a good guess there, right? This one's for Ronnie Moore. He's, I'm gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> exhale, exhale. It's a big moment. This is heady stuff for a 21-year-old. 100. percent And we yeah. got to talk last night. I said that. I mean, there's a lot of anglers who have had to deal with, you know, maybe the shadow of their father or their family name. And that's a, how about that call right there? That's another. Wow. Lip reading there. Give a kiss to the fish that helped him get his first limit of the day. I'm going to just see how big that one was. That's, that's going to put him, how much weight is that going to put him at now? Gosh. I'm, well, he's up over 20, isn't he? At 17, so uh, yeah. We did get an update from Kyle Austin's camera guy. Like we said, instead of 16 and a half, he had four for 19. That five and a half pounder, we saw him get excited with the spinnerbait. He didn't weigh it and got just kept going fish. 6'11 was what that one ended up weighing. So he had a 6'11, a five and a half, and a four and three quarters. That's two pounder, that was quite accurate. Yeah. Laker entered, entered that fish as a six pound, four ounce. He's up to 23.7. And back he's in back the in the lead. Yeah. And uh -oh, we got in him. record territory. 77 pounds, three ounce total. These guys down in Lake Moultrie have got a pretty good run. Yes, yes You know, getting to the diversion canal is a pretty yeah. good it's little 40, trip. 45 minutes, they yeah. said on the phone last night, if it's not yes. bad. Yeah, so yeah. these guys, their timing is getting Attention. very limited. That's the thing about Come a short in. day. Your mind starts thinking a lot faster. You start fishing a little faster, you know. Because um, if you're in a late flight at the open, you might have to wait until 5.30. Right. So, I mean, your, your day is <laughs> forever long. It right. Seems. It's open-ended almost. Yeah. That messer. Got a 7.10. That's our Phoenix boat big bass. Number two. Challenge that. But ain't as big as the other one, but. Good to start filling in behind that one. It's bass. Everyone he catches has been a good fish. It's just so slow in here. It takes a lot of casting. He said he really had into some big ones every now and then. He said it's somewhat of a depression, maybe someone classified as a ditch, but it's you know 100, 100 foot wide where it's a little deeper. And it's a three and a half pounder. It puts me up to about close to 11 pound in two. If I can just get some bites, they're all solid ones, but dang on it's hard. He said he's been pulled down at times and just fan casting, trying to cover it. You, know, when you got it. It's not a, a defined ditch, it's just, it could be anywhere in here, but he said throughout the day, there'll be, you know, one o'clock, they'll have another flurry of fish come through, but today, he doesn't get to fish at one o'clock. He's gotta be back at one, so yeah. he's really gotta press it and hope that there's not a midday lull. Maybe one every hour will get it done. I could not imagine trying to throw a wacky worm with the wind On like a tree. that, <laughs> not doing it. Was that where Wacky Wern was invented at Santee? Because has to be. Everybody <laughs> throws a wacky wig. I would, you know, dinger. Or Lake Fork, you know, you also you know. associate yeah. it with Lake Fork big yeah. time. You know what's weird? What interesting is ugh, there's bluegill on that bed eating all the fry, eating all the eggs or something. I can see the bluegill going crazy. One big reason is all those cypress trees you see, they have those roots, the knees, you know, that come far out. 
and when you use a standard Texas rig, maybe if it's a half ounce or three eighths ounce, you're more likely to get down in there and do that. You were throwing a Texas rig, but you had varied up the weights where you had four of the same baits, but you had two or three different weight selections there. Yeah, yeah. That was, like you said, flipping Cypress knees, it's it's really tough to throw a bigger weight. You know, you'd love to to be able to be more accurate, but I was throwing a 3 16 a quarter, and a 5 16 was about as big as I would go. Because, you know, when you really get to how fast even a quarter ounce gets to the bottom, it's fast. Mm -hmm. You know, when, you just, when you're flipping shallow, you know, less than three or four foot of water. So that lighter weight, and you're not going to get hung up near as much. You know, that, that's a big thing, too, because it seems like Cypress fishing for me, I'm not a real, real big Cypress guy because Santee is about the only place I've ever really fished them, is how many trees can I fish in a day? Mm. You know, I'm liable to, I mean, I want to make three to five flips at each tree and I'm ready to the next one as fast as I can go down and get as many of them. And uh, because flipping is a game of uh, numbers and how many, how many times you can put your bait in the water. And so that's, that's, uh, that was a big thing for me there. When you were there, it was a month later mm -hmm. than it is now, right? And yeah. Still, you were, those were spawners. Still spawning then yeah. too, you know. Okay. Um, so I, th I just think there's such a big, and I, I don't think the water got extremely warm. I think we were still in the upper 60s, maybe right around 70, because the shad spawn hadn't really kicked off. You know, it was it was almost starting to happen, but we had a little bit of cool spell, and it kind of backed that of water off, and those fish still went up on there They'll and run kept up spawning. on a jerkbait and bite it because it's like a bluegill. That's what they're doing. They're down there chasing. Got a little different picture here, guys. We're first week of March here at Santee Cooper, a place where we'd expect the spawn to be a big factor for the, de the, the decisions these anglers are going to make. Luke, we saw a lot of forward-facing sonar. We saw you on camera, successful at Toledo Bend doing that. Explain the difference from, we're seeing spinner baits, lipless crankbaits in the current, it's pre-spawn. We're also seeing chatter baits and, you know, and lipless in the grass down in Moultrie Factor. And then we're gonna see guys who are skipping trees that they could be spawning or flipping on beds like we're seeing with Scott Martin. A little bit different view compared to just looking down at your graph the last few events, but Toledo and Fork were more of a winter to pre-spawn tournament for the most part mm -hmm. compared to where we're transitioning these next few events. Yeah, I mean, and obviously Santee's got some deep water in it, but these fish live in five foot or less 90% of the year, it seems like, you know, and that's whenever guys really can catch them. And plus, like we talked about, the grass is coming back and it's a lot harder to use live scope up super shallow like these guys are going. I mean, uh, you've seen Chad Grisby, he's up there throwing it, uh, water will of grass that I call it, you know, right on the bank. bank. Grass, yep. And uh, so, I mean, and you're wanting to cover water there, you know, and, and these guys are covering water and finding that active fish. You know, Chad said when that chatter bay would come through that bed, they're still going to hit it. You know, they're not just chasing it away. They're going put it to put it to shame. So I think that's one thing that these guys not having to use the forward facing, you know, and yeah. and it's a there's a full-fledged spawn going on right now there you know it's you know it's happening we're seeing yeah. Scott do exactly what he did at Okeechobee with perspective yeah, mode right. which is the shallow water version of you know forward facing sonar right. of live scope that perspective mode allows him to see those bluegill swimming around on beds or that fish sitting in the bed to where when it is dirtier water like Chad Grigsby's talking about you can wind baits through there and get a reaction and and either land the fish or slow down now or it also allows you to sneak up on places where you expect them to spawn, but you can't see because it is dirty mm -hmm. or cloudy or not conducive conditions. And like he said, he said here, same thing he said down at I got them coming. They're, they're new fish every day yeah. showing up here. So, Yeah, this isn't a major, I don't guess it's a major cold front pushing through, so these fish are still coming. No, they're, yeah. they're, wanting, they're, mm -hmm. they're wanting to do their thing and spawn. They said that Ronnie, Mc Ronnie McCoy said that the water temp was around 55 to 56 sustained when they got here for practice Saturday or Sunday and that it's now sustained 61 in a lot of areas. So obviously cool, cool rain or windy conditions can tone it back a little bit, but for the most part that floor of water temp has now risen five or six degrees since practice. So these fish are now more stable. This is the only real change that they've had. You know, it's kind of like Florida. It seems like every year we go to Florida to start the year, we have a cold front and it's tough in practice. And then all of a sudden the tournament day, it warms up and that water 
it seems like that cold front really pushes these fish. You know, it kind of slows them down, then all of a sudden they get that warm trend and they're like, we've got to go. You know, Chad's hooked up too, so he's got the chatterbait still working. You can see how dirty his water is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a keeper. Going to be fish number two for Chad Griggs. He's already got a, another one similar size in the live well. We have about three anglers with limits right now. He is tied at the top. Two. <laughs> yes, absolutely. This is this is a battle going on out there today. Kyle Austin started the day with the lead. Look at Laker Howell just right. It's a virtual tie between those. Those are unofficial weights right there. So that is a great battle at the top. Martin dangerous here. E Bear. Hey, they're all dangerous here. The top ten in action on the Santee Cooper. Our SV spool design is made with one thing in mind, casting control. Whether it is casting lightweight baits, skipping, pitching, or casting into the wind, the Tatula SV reels virtually eliminate backlashes when set properly. Now with our groundbreaking technology and innovations, backlashes can be a thing of the past. Out here, it takes a certain type. The type who's always the first one out. The type who knows deep down everyone else is just fishing for second. Enter the Apex Series. See more fish. Seize more victories. Settle for nothing less. With unrivaled clarity, it's the top fish finder for the most demanding type of angler. Only from Hummingbird. Every day, we live to serve you. On the farm, our tires work as hard as you do, ensuring a bountiful harvest. We empower your discovery beneath the surface. We stand tall with you to conquer timber. We maximize efficiency in an interconnected world. We help you build the foundation of tomorrow. No matter the job, we know that your success is our success. Because at Maxim Tire, we get the job done. Tomorrow on Fox, the NASCAR Cup Series gets heated as the best drivers in the world take on the jewel of the desert in Phoenix. Pre-race begins at 2.30 Eastern. The engine's firing at 3.30 Sunday on Fox. Got a big race going on right here. The Santee Cooper Lakes, that is Laker Howell. He's obviously got an affinity for this lake. He just pulled himself into near, right up behind our leader, Kyle Austin. 
on the strength of some good, good fish early on today, one of our few with a limit so far. We've seen good fish, we have not seen an abundance of limits, so it's not a, it's not a, a free throw for sure by any means. You gotta figure out something special if you wanna win this one, it looks to be very, very tight at the top. Tommy Laker's got a good first name to be a fisherman, and he's got a pretty good last name in terms of uh, reputation in the biggest tournament in the sport, the Bassmaster Classic, and Laker would love to add his name to the list that is fishing Ray Roberts in 2025. With a win today, he could do it in that young 21, 22-year-old. Made a long trip down to Moultrie, and he has gotten in his area, which is a little bit more protected from that southeast wind, and he has paid off big time. He led momentarily just a little bit ago, and this will be the first time he's cashed a check in a BASS event. Of course, it's only his third. His father has earned $1.9 million in Bassman. You think he got any of that? Well, yeah, in couple, allowances. I mean, probably got a yeah, couple allowances. Yeah, a couple allowances. Yeah, a couple allowances. Time, yeah. like he's that. gotten some checks via Bass, but yeah. just not in his name. <laughs> Look at how tight it is between Kyle, Austin, and Laker. Hal right there, just about, as we say, a virtual tie. Those are unofficial numbers right there. And Scott Martin, next one down the list, but a ways back. For sure, nine pounds back along with Dakota Ebert. That mess are rounding out our top five today. As we mentioned to you, everyone's feeling a sense of urgency out there as we're going to fish a foreshortened final day. It's going to end not at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, but at 1 Eastern because the wind is going to kick up. That front has passed through. It's going to shift around and make it, uh, especially for anglers down in Moultrie, it's, it's going to be a project yeah. getting back to the to the check-in. Good one sitting there. Got Kyle Luke Austin Palmer did. Here with uh, yeah, yeah, Luke Palmer's joining us today, Tommy. Yeah. Kyle Austin just got his limit when we went to break. Day. That's why he retook the lead. It's just a two, two and a half. He's got two fish under three yeah. pounds he would love to call out. Uh-oh. He said it was a big one sitting there, so... Like we said, it goes from the big rod, one ounce spinner bait it looked like, with a uh, half or three quarter ounce trap, and then picks up the spinner rod with braid. He's making me eat my words, ain't he? <laughs> we know the effect of that big. simple do nothing worm on the tree. It's probably up a little bit more. A little bit of a big one for a second. God, he fought like he was seven pounds. They feisty this morning. Ugh, I don't know what's going on. Well, this one is a two, I don't know. I mean, this will make Ronnie have to catch 23 and some change. about Ronnie McCoy, who started the day in second place, also a, a Santee Cooper area angler. Ronnie got a slow a start. quiet today, yeah. yeah. Very, very slow start for Ronnie but McCoy. But he said, yeah, he said last night on the phone, I pull into my area and around the six foot depth zone and I start fishing from there in. He said, today though, I, I hit him in the, the four foot range, so I may start in the four foot range and go shallower from there and see. So he's got a long way, a couple hundred yards between depth zones, so he's got a long expanse. He's got to really figure it out. Cody Ebear still bears, needs to fill his five. limit. Not worth the time. That's okay. That's fine. I want to go to Classic, though. We need them five pounders, huh? Six, seven pounders. It looks all nice and stuff there now, and it wasn't nice yeah, about two nice. hours ago. It was very, <laughs> you know. And, and Dakota, I believe, is on the south mm -hmm. side of the lake, so that's yeah. more protected than what the wind could change later. But like you said, it's not its not the fishing that's bothered by the wind. It's the navigation and safety travel, and you got to consider the 10 anglers, the 10 cameramen in there as well. 
get out to Matt Adams, Alabama angler. We spent a lot of time with down at Lake Oak. We had a good tournament down there. Poultry looks like it's got a little bit of color to it and stuff too. Normally it gets, it seems like it gets really clear. He was posting a lot before this event and said he was really struggling in practice. I think that's sometimes a good thing at this <laughs> lake. So fish. you just go fishing Sam. instead of running around everywhere. Ooh, that's keep. Number three. Number three. You know, that's how all their hummingbirds, you know, a lot of them, we have a lot of contours on all of our other lakes. Here it's like just red. Yeah, yeah it's just some point, so. shallow. A day like today, you take all you can get. That's the key deal. I mean, the difference in catching fish in two feet of water or two and a half feet of water is a big deal. Two twelve. That's a hundred yards difference or two hundred yards difference. Those fish can mm -hmm. pull in and pull out, or they could be swimming and not in a feeding mode. They're just on their way to wherever they're going next. We got to see Adams finish fifth at Lake Okeechobee. Had on camera, and then uh, he fell off on Wachita. Now the 18th in points. After this, he's he's up in our top three. He's just finished. It's always how low is your lowest tournament going to be? Because Paul Marks had two top tens to start the year, gets 118th after yesterday, and has fallen into you know the 14th, 15th place yes, in the points cool. race. And he was leading and kind of looked unbeatable. So like if your worst can be a 70th or a 65th, cool. that's the key. Yeah. We saw well, a lot of big names have some bad tournaments here. Ish Monroe, 110th place was eighth place. He's still in a good position at 19th in yeah. points. For sure. That's as far as he's, he's sure. fallen, just with I'm 110th still looking, though. I'm still looking at people who, who moved up to 40th in points. Oh, yeah. Because only three anglers have had a top 50 in all three events, unlike last year where we had seven, you know, or, or 10 after a couple events. It's a smaller percent, a lot more variance, you know, in the top 10 now in points-wise. Yeah, it's about 20-something, seven more from first to tenth than it was last year. There's a little tighter. And we'll see them start condensing down here. After yeah. about two more opens, you start oh, no kind of you kind of start seeing if you're not within that top twenty five, yep. you, you your chances are going way down unless you all of a sudden top get a three the couple next time. Yes. Yeah. Which you is know. what Tyler Williams did. I think yeah. he was twenty seventh with three events left. He won one, got a top ten and then got sixth or something in his last three and makes it. Yeah. Yeah, you got to go on the, one of those top ten runs where, you know, our, our JT Tompkins and, and John Garrett and Trey McKinney had yes. all those top tens. Yeah. So they stayed up there. They really pulled away. They didn't even have to. And Robert G as well was pretty close to not having to do much in the final event. When you think about the, after the first event, obviously 50 anglers were in the top 50 after the first event. That's common math that most fishermen and most people can do. Top 50 after the first one all got in the top 50. After two events, only 20 anglers had gotten a top 50 in both tournaments, and now it's only three. So Santee, for as many big ones were swimming around, it was a flip-flop, no doubt about it. Yeah. I mean, when we're, when we're classifying East and Fothergill's 81st as like a save, you know, a salvage, right. he's only yeah. fifth in points, he didn't drop that far. Yeah. That's saying that a lot of people got triple-digit finishes yeah. this week. Yeah, and that's easy to do at Santee. I mean, you can get, you can get in a bad rotation, you know, you can get in a bad ditch or something that the fish had actually moved further or moved out on you, and, and it's easy to do. I mean, and you're not getting a ton of bites. I mean, you can probably go back and look at all these guys, talk to them. They've probably had six to nine bites a day, you know, and if you mess up on two of those, yeah. you know, and you don't have a limit, you know. I'm, I'm amazed there's guys like Bobby Bakewell. Yeah. He, he, he was up from 24th. He only finished. You know, 25th to get into the top 10, he's seventh in points right now. There's other guys like that who didn't have that high a finish, but they moved up. Feels early in the morning, but you got to also consider the clock is ticking. These guys that only have about three and a half hours fishing time left in this shorting, shortened day coming up here. And a great, great battle at the top. Kyle Austin, Laker Hal, both of these anglers up their game day two over day one. Kyle Austin by about six pounds and Laker Hal by four. Great, great stuff from down here in South Carolina. Don't give up.
You're here for the hook set and nothing else. Because the battle between you and the bass should always be front and center. And now that the best trolling motors ever made are even better, we'll lead the charge. So you can focus on getting them to bite whenever and wherever the fight takes you. With Minn Kota, you're free to fish on any front. Discover the Dakota Lithium DL Plus 135 amp hour battery. With dual purpose 135 amp hour deep cycle capacity and an impressive 1000 cold cranking amps, this innovative battery is equipped with even heat technology, allowing charging even in temperatures below 32 Fahrenheit and boasts power gauge Bluetooth connectivity for real time monitoring. Dakota Lithium, engineered to power your passion from bow to stern. The Yamaha Whitewater's Bassmaster Kayak Series has been a big part of the surge popularity of bass fishing out of a kayak. As a matter of fact, they are having their a classic for the year in the Sooner State of Oklahoma down on Lake Ten Killer, March 2021st. Same uh, week as the classic up on the Grand Lake of the Cherokee. Scan the QR code there if you'd like to learn more about the kayak series and how you might uh, might get involved. Very very interesting and. Uh, a lot of people enjoying that as a great gateway into fishing for bass. Why wouldn't it be? Kyle Austin, and with the lead right now, started the day with the lead. Looking to make it to the Bassmaster Elite Series. Came, same, so, came so close back in 2023. He needed a limit on that final day at the Harris Chain that might have done it for him. He had four fish on the final day of the season. It all comes down to that. He misses out on the Elite Series qualification. Gets back in the saddle this year. Tommy has a good start at Okeechobee. This is his style of fishing. Grew up here at Santee Cooper. Spends a lot of time on the water whether it's cat fishing or bass fishing, and has been well prepared for this event. Obviously, there's an off-limits portion of two weeks or so before each event, so these last two weeks, he's more so bit his fingernails off waiting for that? this tournament, yeah, and then he's point. had to manage historical knowledge in the moment fishing of what these fishing do. And normally, Luke, locals do not like seeing a big wave of spawners happen during their event because it kind of equalizes their you know, ability to have an advantage on everybody else. Oh yeah, when those, when those fish move up, you know, obviously they probably know the better areas, but five random fish pull up there and a guy stumbles on them and has a big bag and, you know, your 23 or four pounds is nothing to a 28 to 30 pound bag. And you know, that kind of happened here, but Kyle has figured out, you know, he's he's got on the right stuff. 
he got on that pre-spawn bite and those fish are sitting there waiting and, and he was able to manage that. Normally, that's hard to do. He you says know. he caught uh, a great five fish limit, almost his 24 pounds on day one off of that starting spot. And he said, I, I really didn't expect it all of day two. And then I caught him so good, was able to catch a six pounder later to get to 31. I really didn't expect to have it two days in a row. So catching a six plus pounder, a five and a half and a almost five pounder, more than a bonus on this championship yeah. Saturday. Kyle, good luck. Tell us how your day's going, man. Uh, so far, so good. Um, we had a decent start again. Um, I don't know, we got a little bit over 20 pounds. Right now, I'm on my secondary deal, just trying to catch a big one, but uh, looking at these limbs right here, we're probably gonna be taking a boat ride soon. It is, it's cranked up here. And this place gets rough, so um, I really think I need like 24 pounds to have a, a good shot. So we're going to try to fish as many little trees as we can and see if we can't catch two, four pounders and, and have that, you know, kind of bag. And if it doesn't work out, man, it has been an awesome week. Anytime I can be on my home pond competing <coughs> in the Bassmaster Opens and having a shot at the Classic, you can't ask for anything more. So it's a, been a crazy week, and it is blowing. Cow. Insane. Hard to be accurate with a weightless <laughs> wacky worm on the base of trees with the wind like it yeah. is. So there might be like four footers out on that main lake right about now. Holy cow! They're blowing over out here. And the camera guy's just loving it. The more he talks about oh, it, he's yeah. just like, oh, that's going to be fantastic. Great. Awesome. <laughs> Coach Gallant, the Fish's Elite Series from Canada, he told me that big waves fire him up. And uh, I don't think I can agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> this does not fire me up. This makes me want to take ibuprofen and some muscle relaxer to get back across. <laughs> Woo. It could be a... A, a positive confirmation for him the fact that he already has 21 plus pounds in the boat that if others haven't gotten off to a good start that hey I've got a good decent weight before right we're gonna shoot to the all this wind hit see the little trailing arm of one of these uh, back inside of this front here it's hitting the lakes right now and getting causing what's Kyle's getting a little bit concerned about it. you. Might want to listen to a guy who's out here every day, and he oh, says, no, no. "I may take a boat ride soon." He knows what can happen out there. But I guess it's it's probably blowing right into Talkall, though, isn't it? Yeah, it looks is, like so. from that. Whether it's the southeast or direct south, it's yeah, it's blowing. Well, it's about this move you're making. Yeah, I'm just moving right across the creek, trying to get out the wind. Uh, there's a few locals in this area. I'm just trying to hit high percentage places. I mean. I have fished these trees out here, I mean, a billion times, so I'm just gonna fish once and I think I have a good shot of catching a giant. And we're gonna keep rolling. It's, uh, right now our decision is gonna be when we're gonna head back across because it's really starting to bring the heat out there now. It was, uh, it was actually beautiful about an hour ago. But we're just gonna slide right here real fast. Major you gotta watch out for those locals. Yeah, exactly, right? yeah. Those who might even sign up for the tournament. He's a you know. local. <laughs> Huge shout out to the cameramen who are out there. Absolutely, um, man. Tom They're specifically the best. is with Kyle, but there's there's nine other angler or nine other cameramen out here with the anglers. You have drone operators, you have photographers out there as well. So tournament staff setting up. Second place right behind him there. Laker Howell. He st which you think the chatterbait deal, the wind would be okay. Yeah. You know, even though he, he his is actually a lot more protected than For sure. any, you know, almost about any wind, you know, so he's going to be able to fish, this, but one of these trees it, it, when it is blowing hard, regardless, it's, it's just, it's not as fun to fish, or it's, you know, it's just, it's tougher. You know, luckily he's just fan casting. He's not throwing directly to a tree. So uh, I think that it, it can't hurt him any. 
Laker might be one of those guys who's like, I felt the wind blowing today, but when he pulls the troll motor up to leave, he's going to turn the corner. When he comes out of there, well, when he gets through the tournaments in my one or stuff like that, it'll be a different ball game when he gets cut across. So he'll be fine, you know, hugging the boat, running back until you hit that boat lane. And he hits that boat lane about midway through it, and then to turn to go to talk off, she's going to be rolling. Right now he's got the biggest bag of the day, 23.7 on bass track. Two fish right around <laughs> six pounds and another five and a four and a quarter. Tupelo Still trees. got a small two. Really cypress trees. Um, the Tupelos, they, it doesn't have a lot of character on the bottom of them. Very slender. They really like to spawn around them. It's kind of a little pattern you can get on every once in a while. You can tell how. <laughs> and he's still skipping that wire up there. I don't even know if yeah, I can I make it up, that put up. Days like this, fish don't know you're coming, though, Luke, because uh, they can't even hear anything else no, other than the wind under the water, right? Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. It masks your noise <laughs> yeah. really well. <laughs> it's going to blow Laker out of the boat. <laughs> yeah, he would look like he was going to oh, take yeah. flight there for a minute. I don't care. <laughs> Oh, those are the frustrating times. You know, when you're, you know, you're looking to try to win one, and then you have a weather system come through, and it's like they didn't get it hmm. for some reason. You know, I think it that probably actually hurt Kyle some. You know, that wind blowing against the current slows it down a little yeah. bit. I mean, I know mm -hmm. that's a big thing. We go up. I'm not a big current guy, but we go to the St. Lawrence River. When the wind blew a different way down that river, the fish would almost like as they'd shut off in a way, you know, especially when we we're trying to drift we back, you know, when we actually drifted the current. And uh, if it was blowing against it, you were just like dead in the water. And it was, it was weird to have to try to learn how to do that. And, you know, I think that, like he said, it was just swirling this current. I think yep. that might have broke that school of fish up a little bit instead of keeping them right there where they were at. It's amazing how just a little bit more wind or a little bit less wind or a little bit more current and those seams are so definitive. You could have, someone can look there and be like, look at that water coming right there. But then on a day like this, when it does swirl, you're not quite please, sure buddy. where that cast please, please, is. Please, 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 got it. No. I could actually see him on live scope, swimming around the base of that tree. And it looks like the right one sitting up there. Looks like we've got a move. Ronnie McCoy started the day just inside of Moultrie. Mm -hmm. Made a move and on this side of Utahville in the brickyard. He's getting in the good juice. Another one of our local anglers. Started a pound back of the lead. Now he's 10th. This water over here is a lot clearer than where I've been fishing. Now, uh, what are you on there? So I'm tying on a jig, um, just a 7 16 ounce homemade jig. Um, it's got a Zoom Z cross trailer on it. It's got a little old die chartreuse, just for a little flare in case one of them big girls like to get excited over color. And uh, we're just gonna try to. I guess slow down a little bit and pitch in some of these trees. These fish should be in here spawning on some of these trees. So it's a good area. We'll see what happens. We'll say Ronnie McCoy is our senior member out there among the 10 who have graduated to championship Saturday. And he knows this place, obviously, like no one else. 49 bags over 20 pounds yesterday. You know, I just speak to how well this lake's fishing right now. What a phenomenal fishery it is. That's a big one. We found a blimp. We've got grass coming back into the lake. You know, you've got cypress trees. You've got a lot of offshore structure. You can pretty much pick how you want to fish and, and do well on this lake.
pitching, or casting into the wind. The Tatula SV reels virtually eliminate backlashes when set properly. Now with our groundbreaking technology and innovations, backlashes can be a thing of the past. shows you what's below in real time with edge-to-edge -edge clarity and no gaps in coverage, all so you can turn must-watch detail into non-stop action. Only from Humminbird. Every day, we live to serve you. On the farm, our tires work as hard as you do, ensuring a bountiful harvest. We empower your discovery beneath the surface. We stand tall with you to conquer temple. We maximize efficiency in an interconnected world. We help you build the foundation of tomorrow. No matter the job, we know that your success is our success. Because at Maxim Tire, we get the job done. When dawn spreads across the serene waters of South Carolina's largest lake, Clarendon County suddenly turns into a playground. It's a destination for boaters, campers, hunters, hikers, kayakers, bikers, and golfers. Well, today it's a huge regular season finale on Fox. First, tenth rate. Creighton takes on Villanova at 2.30 Eastern time. Then at 5, eighth ranked Marquette battles Xavier. And in prime time, second ranked UConn facing Providence. All tips off later today on Fox. You watched Fox weather this morning before you got over here. You saw a lot of people in the country are getting to deal with some heavy weather during the course of this day, just uh, all the way from Texas up to basically Newfoundland. And uh, no exception here in this corner of South Carolina. We've had some big storms moving through, mostly passed through, but the aftermath of those storms, the winds that's ex that are expected are causing us to have a shortened day today. It will end at 1. The check-in time is going to be 1 Eastern time and not 2.30. So that's part of everyone's adjusted game plan. All our 10 who are left out here on championship Saturday, including our winner at the first St. Croix Bassmaster Open down at Okeechobee. Five, that was five weeks ago. It doesn't seem five weeks ago. We've done 19 tournaments in those five <laughs> weeks, Tommy. <Yeah>. Five. <laughs> so, no, this does mark the end of the third Open this season. We've had two elites, We've had three college events. Ooh. Uh oh. So what you said, he was, he was a pretty good ways back still, though, isn't he? Keep Eight digging, dude. Pounds or was. Oh yeah, big fish. Big fish. Yeah, he was. Yes, <laughs> it was. Not, it was. That Let's, could be. That could be the big, change. big number that it was. He just said it was big. Oh yeah, yeah it seems to be. Oh, yeah. Oh gosh. Wow. No, no, no. Come here, buddy. Yeah! Woo! That is awesome, dude. First cast with the drop shot. I was like, you know what might work? Drop shot. First cast, guys. Look at that, dude. It fell out. Look, it fell out. <laughs> I knew that was a big one, dude. Yes! That was called an oh, adjustment. We sat on this fish. fish. We sat yes. on it. We oh, sat. Wow. That's like a late. six and a half cent <laughs> pounder. I said, dude, it's chasing. I know I can catch this fish. It wouldn't be. I had it on for a minute. 
I said, drop shot. Hmm. I said, maybe first cast, I'd better. Yes! Dude! That's a big one, too. So Ma, yeah. <laughs> it's like, like Santee. Awesome. You know, my dad grew up here and he fished this like years and years. And he still hadn't told me any spots. <laughs> <laughs> Dude! That's for you, Pops. He could win another open. A little spinning rod action. <laughs> I mean, he's legit. He could be a double qualifier what? with only Just three happened. people qualified for the classic. Six Scott ten, Martin, baby. Jeremiah <laughs> Kenny, Scott Martin. Six ten. <laughs> Let's go. Dude. They left at the wrong time, didn't they? Dude. Dude. That is awesome. Man, today's been a good day. Today's gonna be a good day. I tell you, it's, uh, I gotta give a shout out right now to my wife, because she has been praying. She's been just, just doing awesome. And she's the main, number one, bar none reason I'm able to keep my head on straight. So thank you, honey, for all the support for 20 something years out here. It's tough, I've been on the road for 21 days. Two Bassmaster Elites and then now this one. That's not an easy job at all for any woman, but my wife is special. Been married 25 years and uh, I love you, so. <clears throat> Laker Howell and Kyle Austin kind of had the top to themselves. Uh, someone else has joined the fight up there, just two, two pounds back approximately is Scott Martin. Now that was a 6'10", I think. Wasn't it Such or 6'11"? Was 6'10", yeah. Uh, he's got that 7'2 from earlier. So, <laughs> and yeah. like you said, he's got four fish. Yeah, he's you got know. the most headroom of anything. <sighs> up to Chad Grigsby. Chad did not like the scene at his place where he started today. It didn't work out for him. Big one. Yeah, that was one of those mushy ones, like he said, right there. You seen him kind of just pull into the fish. Stay out of that grass. She's hooked good. No, she's not. <laughs> I thought she was. Yeah, she has. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Woohoo! That's what we're looking for right there. Yeah, she's up good. That's more like it. What's that? What's the bait? Jackhammer, baby. And about 10 yards back there, I lost one about the same size. But we got this one, so. I don't think we need to wear. Well, let's just find out why not. Maybe they moved up. Six thirteen. That was fun. Look, they're all Florida strain, but they just look longer at Santee Cooper for some reason. They are, but it's like Bobby they're just thick. Yeah. Every one of them is. Uh, you know, uh, I, yeah, when, great uh, day. I'm I caught that we're, nine. We're definitely just four, moved up in the six, world. You know, I, it looked like a crappie. I it caught like this long uh, six, and deep. whatever so it was, <laughs> just a minute ago. But there's built uh, different like there. Ten casts before that, I lost one the same size. But I mean, that's part of fishing. She just hit so close to the boat. I just. I, I couldn't turn her and she was just really mad and uh, she pulled off and then it wasn't even 10 casts later I caught a 612 so it definitely helps obviously we uh, still got a lot of work to do but I think we're at least around them and we're out of the wind finally actually I think the wind might be switching a little bit now but it was fun so we're gonna keep plugging along. Same old thing, catching them on a jackhammer. They're up here spawning. I'm in a foot and a half of water. Just hopefully we're gonna run it across a couple more. I can't see them, they're spawning, but I can't 
It'd be a bad day for sight fishing anyway, but I'm not looking at them. So we'll just keep plugging along, see if we can catch four more just like that, and see what happens at the end of the day. We're gonna have fun doing it. Chad moving up into fourth place. Fish like that'll brighten your day. Tells you how big the lake is. Other side of the lake, they're getting blasted oh, by yeah. rain and wind, and it doesn't even look like the same place where he's at. And he's just across the oh, lake from him. You know, it's a wind would be great, obviously. That yeah, that's one of my goals for the year is to make the classic, and this is the way to do it through uh, the open. So that would definitely be nice. Uh, obviously, the money's nice, but. I just, uh, I'm not really thinking about that. I'm just trying to do my job, and if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, hey, we're in the top 10. All we can fall is the 10th. So we're just gonna have some fun, see if we can catch four more like that. And we may not catch another bass, but we're gonna have some fun. This is definitely Chad's best outing of the year. Had a 99th to start out at Okeechobee. We're really bound Rebounded at Washita, where it wasn't easy to rebound with 40, 40 of the spots, so he's he's in our top 20 for points. Have a little ditch coming up right there. Well, everybody talks about the classic. <laughs> that just shows you how big of a deal really, the classic yeah. is. I, you, I mean, you hear more mentions of that than you do of making it to the elite yeah. here. We got some big names, we got some former pros, we got some new names in our top five right now, Tommy. Absolutely. Kyle Austin, of course, started top of everything today. Stayed in there, but Chad Grigsby moving up into fourth place with that 6'12", six, six I think that went in at. Yeah. 6'12", Bass. That's what we're looking for right there. Good turnaround for his morning. Started out, his uh, starting spot was not what he wanted. Scott Martin, man. He, there's no quit in him. He just keeps catching big fish this year. We got a Minnesota angler. We got a Florida angler. Alabama and South Carolina in our top four, Tommy. A little diversity there. I see a little diversity in approaches, too, which is always fun. Laker Hal, our first look at him here on the open scene. And man, he's impressive. I can, I can say that. Got a little bit of Lake Marion the upper lake, a little bit of Lake Moultrie, the lower lake, all producing here at Santee Cooper. Wow, Austin kind of working around the ends of the canal that connects them both, so we're seeing a lot of the Santee Cooper complex today. More to come. Don't give up. Discover the Dakota Lithium DL Plus 135 amp hour battery. With dual purpose 135 amp hour deep cycle capacity and an impressive 1000 cold cranking amps, this innovative battery is equipped with even heat technology, allowing charging even in temperatures below 32 Fahrenheit and boasts power gauge Bluetooth connectivity for real time monitoring. Dakota Lithium, engineered to power your passion from bow to stern.
Jason Foy, Bassmaster Open going on right here. Whoever wins this tournament gets automatic entry into the 2025 Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Classic presented by Jockey Outdoors. That's going to be at Lake Ray Roberts. But in two weeks, we start the 24, 2024 version. Great place. Grand Lake of the Cherokees, Tulsa, Oklahoma, the host city. It is going to be a monster. March 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. A three-day tournament, which determines the world champion, the one who sits on top of the mountain and reigns for a year. And in, uh, most, in more cases than not, in the last 10 years, it's been uh, back-to-backers that have, that have populated that spot. We added uh, Jeff Gustafson and whoever the classic champ is, their jersey hangs here in studio for us to see when we come in. And I said, Jeff, you got either two more weeks on the wall or you'll have another year in two more weeks depending on it's it's up to you jeff that's uh, right gussie and it's up he to said you. i'll do my best to keep it up there another year luke how do you expect fishing to be for the classic uh, you know we're going to have mild temperatures heading up and a little cold mornings but yeah i, I think it's going to be good it's going to be a little we're going to be ahead of what we normally would be in march you know normally mid-march we're still we're still cold you know we're looking at the upper 40s low Damn. 50s uh but I, th I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be really a neat classic. A lot of different techniques are going to take place, and uh, I hope it's uh, my technique that does the best, though. Will there be forward-facing sonar? There will be some of that, <laughs> regardless. You know, um, sure. I don't think it'll be as. It's going to be a big player, obviously, but it won't be as much as it would be the last couple of tournaments. I don't think. Talk about dominating saw, everybody yeah. in the top ten, That's doing that, things makers, like that. that we need, but Matt Messer adding his third keeper. Every hour or so, Messer lands one, and we were talking about it. That jersey, we put it on the wall. Jeff Gustafson, our 2023 Bassmaster Classic champion, winning for the second time on that body of water, the Tennessee River in Knoxville. And we've got quite a few list of short names. You could go, Tommy, Jason Christie, because he's the local favorite there, yep. looking to get some redemption. Hank Cherry's trying to get redemption. Brandon sure. Polinick, Luke Palmer's an Oklahoma angler. Kenta Kamira lives there. There's so many anglers that you could put on maybe a favorites list for this classic. Luke, throw us out a dark horse possibility to win this classic to take it all. Uh, I'd probably almost throw myself in there as a dark horse on you're, that body you're of water. Too good to be a little, dark horse. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> now, uh, you know, Kent has been fishing really well the last couple of years. You know. Uh, He's kind of that quiet guy, kind of does his little thing, and all of a sudden, boom, he's up there, and he, he's he's good. But you know, I don't know. I'm trying to. I can't he's really. He's gotten think. a second and an open in the fall there as well, I believe. So, I mean, so. and you know, it's it's a great fishery. Grand is, um, but trying to sustain to catch 19, 20 a day is very tough in Oklahoma. If, to do it, you know, back to back days is one thing, but if you can do it all three days. That's a very big accomplishment. But that time of year, that can really happen. Five or six bites a day at Grand can be 20 to mm. 25 pounds. You know, you don't have to have a ton of bites there to do really well. So I think that's that's going to that's going to feed into somebody like Kenta, who's really a good grinder. I'd probably go with Kenta. And I like that pick is for one, but then yeah. for two. This lake sets up, Grand sets up very interesting because it's almost three lakes in one. You have the bottom end of the lake, you know, Shangri-La, Horse Creek down, and it's much deeper, a lot more bluff, vertical banks, those pockets. If you're one boat length off the, off the bank, it's 30 feet of water. And then you get to that mid-lake portion just around the Wolf Creek to Shangri-La region, it's, it kind of looks like a regular lake. Mm -hmm. There's some flats, there's some depth changes, there's deep water, there's shallow water. And then when you get above Wolf Creek, it's it's the rivers, yeah. whether it's the, the Neosho, the Elk, yeah, or the Elk spring, spring, you know. Yeah. And, and it's much, so it's it's almost a pick your poison. And we saw in, last time we had a classic there, Edwin Evers did it three days, three different areas. So do you think that that's something that you'll have to balance is switching up regions or will you be able to hunker into an area? I, I think you will be able to, um, but I think with the weather being kind of pretty stationary, I mean, you know, not stationary, but it's been pretty consistent mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks, and it's even looking consistent coming into the Classic. Um, I think, you know, we kind of talked earlier, a guy that, that we didn't think the river normally would play as much, the river may actually really play good this time. I mean, you know, especially when you get up past the elk when you actually get up there in the river river mm -hmm. part of it yeah. I talk yeah. about. Uh, that was kind of the mouth of the elk. There, yeah, where, yeah. Where you know, I think Hackney, didn't Hackney do pretty well? Um, I think Hackney done well he up did, there. He, he spent some time in yeah, there, sure did. Um, up yeah. north. Um, so, and then, but then you, like you said, then you had Aaron Martins plumb down at the dam. Yeah. You know, so it was, it's, 
like you said, it's a pick your poison, but I think that time of the year you're going to be able to do what you want. If you want to get up shallow and go throw a spinner bait on lay downs, you can run up the river and do it. If you want to go crank bluff banks or throw a jerk bait, you're going to be able to do that. Because water temperature is going to vary. I imagine it's probably going to be anywhere from 52 to 58, 59 degrees, depending on the weather. But that's so, I mean, you know, at the dam, it's obviously going to be a little bit cooler than it will be up the river. So it's going to be pick your poison. And uh, it's, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I didn't think Grand was going to be kind of a, a player that I would like too much, but the way it's setting up, it could really set up really well for a bunch of different guys. I mean, because you can see the, the, the field that we have coming, you've got guys that are extremely good shallow water guys, and you got guys who are on the exact opposite end of the spectrum who love to fish deep. You know, I mean, it's it's going to be the battle of the, the you know, up and upper and lower. You yeah, know, that yeah. One. So it'll be kind of like neat. That. That's good stuff. All It'll kinds be, of coverage coming up right here on yeah. FS1, also on the Fox Network, Saturday and Sunday both. It's going to be some good stuff. It'd be super cool to see a topwater bite, a side fishing bite, a <laughs> you know, bite. brush pile bite if they want to. We you live know, for just, that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you'd be surprised. Like, sometimes a buzz bait early that time of year will get you one or two of them giants. Mm. And uh, so don't be surprised if that water doesn't get on up there a little bit that you don't see uh I'm not saying I'll have one on my deck, but uh, Christy might have one. Speaking of Christy, in Group A, he's picked by 37% of the people. You're picked <coughs> by 10% in Group A. You're in Group A behind Walters at 25 and Brandon Palmick at 12. So you're, people are thinking you're going to do well there. Well, the last time they said I was going to do well somewhere was at Lay Lake, and uh, I see where I ended okay. up there. <laughs> so <laughs> My fantasy team, appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. That was Such my, is not trying to I put did the kids set that one up though. We we you pick our drain the, we pick our <laughs> drain the lake teams, Such, Tommy and I, all before the season starts for every tournament. So I didn't know you were gonna win the event before Lay Lake. <laughs> so I had you there and I was like, does he keep it going two weeks in a row? Yeah. I'm not gonna go back on one my word and change it. I gotta keep it the same. But man, I was hoping he'd use it yeah. there instead of saying T. I but, had him for drain, but not then I picked him for fantasy <laughs> the next event. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. and we talked about that, that you just kinda lost focus or I don't know. I I didn't have a good practice at all at Lay. Um, and I mean I really didn't. I mean I was struggling to get bites. Um, I did stupid stuff, you know, and uh, just didn't just, just didn't, didn't understand what I needed to do there. I guess never got a feel for the lake. Even in, I went up there and pre-practice for a couple of days, um, but the water was heck up the river. They were blowing current through it. It was like yeah. four foot high up the river, um, and that was not the case when we were there. Yeah. But, you know, you live and learn. Uh, went away from stuff that I normally do and tried doing stuff I don't do, and that's what that's what got my teeth kicked. And got it back going in the next event, though. Yeah, it took me a little while, but uh, I, had to, I had to do it up north, yeah. which is not Saint really where Claire. I thought I was going to do it. But mm. I knew Champlain was going to be fun. I really like Champlain, and, but I did not think uh, me losing four pounders on the fourth or third day of St. Lawrence mm. River was going to cost me making the top ten. Like I was, li I was just kind of horsing them because I was like, 20 pounds is not going to do anything for me. Well one of those fish would have bumped me to the top 10 oh. so but you know that's part of it you saw laker how catch one that was uh, not would not help so put that one back so he stands there in second place just ounces behind kyle austin unofficial weights there by a bass track scott martin having joined the fray at the top those three leading the way, and time is ticking away. We're going to wrap it up at 1 Eastern time. 1 Eastern time is check-in time, owing to the weather. Grigsby, Ebear, Messer, and the rest. We'll be right back. Our SV spool design is made with one thing in mind casting control. Whether it is casting lightweight baits, skipping, pitching, or casting into the wind, the Tatula SV reels virtually eliminate backlashes when set properly. Now with our groundbreaking technology and innovations, backlashes can be a thing of the past. Out here, it takes a certain type. 
The type who's always the first one out. The type who knows deep down everyone else is just fishing for second. Enter the Apex series. See more fish. Seize more victories. Settle for nothing less. With unrivaled clarity, it's the top fish finder for the most demanding type of angler. Only from Hummingbird. Every day, we live to serve you. On the farm, our tires work as hard as you do, ensuring a bountiful harvest. We empower your discovery beneath the surface. We stand tall with you to conquer temple. We maximize efficiency in an interconnected world. We help you build the foundation of tomorrow. No matter the job, we know that your success is our success. Because at Maxim Tire, we get the job done. What a place for the St. Croix Bassmaster Open. Santee Cooper Lakes, presented by Seven, just one of the big bass meccas of the world. Seven sponsoring our live coverage here. We appreciate that. Just a great, great week these anglers have had here just from day one. I've been taken off with almost 50 20 pound bags on day one. We've had the 30 cracked a couple of times during the course of this event as well. Started with 220 something anglers, 223 I think it was, and we are down to 10 pros on this final day. Some of them just fishing the uh, Division One of the Opens this year. Some of them fishing the EQs, trying to do all nine events, find a pathway to the Bassmaster Elite Series, the top there. There's second and third place, Laker Howell. Second on the right, second on the left, I should say, and Scott Martin, third. Looks like Scott's got the old devil horse out. Something along those lines. With four fish, he's only two pounds, two ounces back of the lead. <laughs> mm. One fish here is, wow. I mean, just going with averages, but yeah. it's probably going to be a four pounder, you, <laughs> you know. know. Really? So it's going to, it's, it's far from over, even though time's, time's a ticking on them, yeah. but it can, it ain't, it's, it's neat when you can say that. You yeah, know? oh yeah. I mean, you know, up in like we're St. Lawrence River or something, it's okay, your chances to come back from six, seven pounds behind is very slim. Right. Very slim. You know, someone's gonna have to stumble and they're not all they're not gonna stumble mm, up good there. Point. So yeah. so here it can I mean you can get in the wrong little ditch at the wrong time or get in there at the right time and you know, Scott just at one spot, you know, he caught two or three keeper just wham, wham, wham. So uh, you know. And Laker might hit one of those little pockets, that little depression in this flat, and catch him an eight or nine pounder, and all of a sudden, 
he's really, in, you know, he can really get up to the lead then. I mean, I know he's in second now, but. Yeah. What's his smallest fish? Has he got like a six ounces back? His smallest is a two one on Bass uh, Track. So for oh, who? Yeah. Rest for, for Laker. Laker. Laker yeah. yeah, smallest for Kyle is also a two pounder. So they both have something to call while Maybe. Scott still needs to add one yeah. to his five fish limit. Yeah, Kyle's got two of those little ones, two three and a two nine. Some of Laker Hell's action from earlier today. Started out with a small one, two one, and then a four four came into the boat. Everything brightened up at that point. <laughs> Laker's been in Lake Moultrie, utilizing a chatterbait. He's been in what we would call the hatchery, which is a very protected area, but overall a huge, vast area that's really shallow. And so the big problem, it seems like, and I talked to Ronnie McCoy about this, who was also fishing in Moultrie this morning, it seems like the ceiling for bag weight is higher at Moultrie than it is at Marion, but the opportunity to bomb, it's so much more volatile because if that water drops out a little bit, they've gotta go hundreds of yards, they gotta go half a mile to get to safe water level, and they get in a non-feeding mood. So the fact that the water has stayed stable for three straight days is hard to imagine, but it has for these yeah. anglers. Yeah, that's that was another thing that you know you say those fish are very, very worris worrisome to that water level, and that happened to our leak that the water really dropped out in Moultrie, and it that diversion canal, it's so narrow it's kind of like was it um, what lake did uh, West Logan well, went on Neely Henry? Yeah, it yeah, was like a bubble, yeah. like the lower lake. I was like, well, heck, the lower lake's going to be high too. No, it Every was day, some it's four foot low. Yeah, you it's know, kind of the same thing happened and, here. Uh, today I've caught. Three of the ones I need. I've got one three and a half pounder that I need to get rid of, and then I need to finish up my limit. So I need two more big ones to have a shot at this thing. But I, I like where we're at. I like I like our pace. You know, um, just taking my time. There's sand holes in here, and there's some fish up on the bank as well. Um, I've got a couple other areas too. So we've got a short day today, so I got to manage my time just right. I can't get in my normal slow pace I got to kind of pick it up just a little bit we got to be in at one o'clock so 12 30 the day's gonna be over and that's not too long away actually so we got to get going oh my gosh I just looked at the clock <laughs> we gotta get busy two more hours of fishing time according yeah. to Scott before yeah. coming in he, he's in potato creek he doesn't need yeah. 30 minutes but that's yeah. that's a good little yeah it's it's probably it's not with about a 10 or 12 yeah. minute ride but he's he might be planning for the wind too because if he comes out of there, it's it uh, could it's be bumpy for sure. But yeah. it looks like it's not, like we said, it's it's like the weather. A little push of rain comes through, the wind blows like crazy, then it kind of slacks off. And yeah. then, um, it's I like would, it's rotating. It's yeah. in the process of rotating right now, so it got real quiet, real yeah. calm. So I'm wondering if it accidentally, if the sun would pop out, that wind could dang sure blow. You know, that's specifically what tournament director Hank Weldon said this morning on the phone was. If that thunderstorm passes by much quicker and it does get sunny, that the wind that's going to be pushing that new system in is the wind that we're worried about. This thing is getting tight. Like I'm getting antsy about it. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's one fish here or there can is going to be the change of you know the destiny for one of these guys at the classic. It won't be for Scott. He'll just be double qualified then. But <laughs> yeah, just imagine. There's three qualifiers for the Bassmaster Classic and two named Scott Martin, you know, because he would double qualify <laughs> yeah. before we really have a third qualifier. Him and Jeremiah Kendi. Luke, these guys, and I'm sure you're one of them, all have a sort of a sixth sense about where they stand versus the rest of the field at any given any given day of a tournament. And, I mean, is someone going to say, oh, I got to I got to take a risk. I got to I got to do something dramatic at the end. Risk not getting back in time. Is, is that a possible scenario? That that's going to be for one of the, one or two of these guys. Yeah, I'm saying, and it's going to be Laker. Is going to okay. be the last second guy because he's the furthest away, and he knows. But if he would accidentally get to 27, 28 pounds in the next 30 minutes, he might be like, okay, now I'm not going to go beat myself yeah, to yeah. death. I'm going to get back in plenty of time. Matt Messer in that same category because he only is getting a fish every hour, hour and a half. If he's pushing it at the end of the day and he finally gets a limit or he's got four, I gotta just, I gotta stay here just yeah. a little longer and then you're gonna see him have to push it to come back. And that's one thing about Santee, look at these guys, they're all committed to areas. 
they're not running around, you know. Um, we did say uh, McCoy, did he, he moved from Moultrie up? Or who was it? You McCoy. Said McCoy. Ronnie, yeah, uh, he yeah, started yeah, down he, there. He's the only one that's yeah, made a run. run. Yep. Besides uh, Kyle, you know, yeah. he went from the bottom. But that was yeah. that was a more of a planned deal. He had one spot and he's For coming sure. back. So Now Chad's starting to pick it up. He gets one or two more bites here, and he's going to be right there in the mix. Yeah, yeah. got one early, and his area kind of quit on a little bit. Didn't like the, the color and everything. Made some moves. Said that bank grass, whether it, it's not necessarily water willow, it's it's weird pencil grass. Like he said, he calls it yard grass. You know, it's it's but literally it's a like round grass. Yeah, like yeah. grass you'd see in your backyard. He said, I've just been catching fish around that, and it's kind of the only thing they have other than eel grass off the bank. So if there's any fish near the bank that aren't, you know, under some kind of lily pads, it's it's around that kind of grass. And so he's been using a chatterbait all week on that, and and he mentioned I've been at this thing 20. 23 years and I said you've been at pro fishing longer than most of our elite rookies this year are, are old you know and so he, I said that you're one of the older guys out there what would it mean to make the Bassmaster Classic and he said dude I've I've won a lot of things I've fished a lot of a long time and been on the elites and didn't do too hot I would love to make it back to the elites but first and foremost I'd love to be able to fish in the Bassmaster Classic one big bite he's 8-6 back of the lead on four fish We've seen a lot of big fish this week at 10-3. Yeah. Far from over here today. That's, I think mm -hmm. that's the underlying message we're picking up here. Who's going to be able to stick it out the longest at a place that's producing for them? That's, uh, that's, that's one of the questions to be answered. Lots of other questions as well. And the clock is ticking in the background. I'm wrap it up early today on Santee. Better get some big ones. should always be front and center. And now that the best trolling motors ever made are even better, we'll lead the charge. So you can focus on getting them to bite whenever and wherever the fight takes you. With Minn Kota, you're free to fish on any front. Discover the Dakota Lithium DL Plus 135 amp hour battery. With dual purpose 135 amp hour deep cycle capacity and an impressive 1000 cold cranking amps, this innovative battery is equipped with even heat technology, allowing charging even in temperatures below 32 Fahrenheit and boasts power gauge Bluetooth connectivity for real time monitoring. Dakota Lithium, engineered to power your passion from bow to stern.
Championship day of the St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Santee Cooper Lakes, presented by Seven Reels. That is our unofficial standings right there with Kyle Austin, the native of this area, on top there, but just by ounces ahead of Laker Howell. Those two very close, tightly locked up together. They had the top to themselves for a while. Scott Martin in the past hour has hoisted himself up into a, a tight third there. Chad Grigsby, a turnaround from a slower start this morning. We spent some time also with Dakota Ebear, Matt Messer, Matt Adams, and all the rest. Uh, uh, a lot of these guys have gotten their work done, Ronnie, in, in some sense, by just being in, in the points. 100%. Evan Kung, one of our guys in the top 10, has had two great events leading into this. He had a 17th place finish at Okeechobee, a 9th place finish at Lake Washita. So no matter, even though he started the day in 6th, if he falls to 10th, it is a job well done for Canadian Evan Kung. He's had some issues with his camera. Like we said, a lot of, a lot of rain and moisture wind out there on Santee Cooper, but Evan with a few fish this morning, and one big deal for him is he fished the Opens last year. He fished all of them, didn't have the best go of it, was really getting his feet here in the States, figuring out what he needed to do for his identity and personality, and we see him switching it up from something we saw at Washita. We saw him uh, deep, deep water using his forward-facing sonar, but here fishing up on the bank, probably for sight fish as well throughout the week. So Evan having a great tournament. Like we said, only three anglers remain who have have had consistent finishes to start the year. Three top 50s for Evan Kung, and that is why he is your Tackle Warehouse elite qualifier points race leader a third of the way through the season, trailing or beating uh, Dakota Ebear by about 25 points. We got our uh, Tackle Warehouse EQ qualifier, elite qualifier scoreboard up there, and yeah, there you see Evan on top there and Dakota Ebear out there today. If you're doing good today, you were up there in the in the points uh, depending on how you did at the first couple of events matt adams also great start for him down in okeechobee mike sermon look at mike sermon who's an okeechobee guy who started great yes. at washita yeah he and that's actually his worst finish he led day one of washita and had his worst Big finish of the year because he fell off to 68th on two day two fish. but hanging out there he's fished over 240 professional level tournaments in his career oh, yeah. but only 17 with BASS and he's so he's so long in his career but has jumped over to try to make the elite series make the classic sitting in a good spot and then he's got one of the youngest prodigies right behind him Easton Fothergill to wrap out our yeah. top five a lot of diversity on that tackle warehouse leaderboard EQ leaderboard back out to Scott Martin Got a bunch of ties well, in the top 10 and then top 15 there just is. below. There you go. Scott, this could be big. And the way that fish is moving, it sounds like a good one. Oh. All right. There's a limit. Got a limit in the head. Oh my gosh. It's a two pounder. We got a limit now. Okay. Hitter's getting tight at the top. Ooh. Three guys within a half a pound. Wow. Okay, if I probably need to put him on the little Two side because he might get eaten if he gets thrown in there for big <laughs> That's right. Two pounds. I was going to say, Scott was way too laid back to be where he was talking. I was like, I'd be on the front deck slinging and bringing. You only got, you got four. I'm going to have to keep getting after it. So Laker Howell now has been bumped down into third place, but they are all so close together. It's a yeah. He is one five-pound bite away from his classic. Oh, absolutely. you know, I mean, that's his father texted me. It was a nine-pound bite, one nine-pound <laughs> bite, and he'd feel better about his son <laughs> oh, yeah. making the classic. Yeah, they're in route. Are they? To the weigh-in, they're going to try oh, to good. with that good. with that hour and a half folks, earlier yeah. check-in. <laughs> <Nah, laughs> yeah, any troopers that there. see them, just let them go on. <laughs> just know that they're in good hands. <laughs> oh, is this going to help him in there? That's going to be marginal. That morning period, even though it's sight fishing oriented, spawn based tournament, there's still a significant morning bite for those who have been using those moving baits, using chatter baits, lipless spinner baits. So. Th that feeding window is still so evident, whether it's been cloudy, sunny, windy, rainy, it doesn't matter. There's, that morning period has been huge for these anglers. Shaking his head, no help. That one is not going to do it, not going to make the team. I think that, I think those fish in the morning that, that ones are throwing moving baits by on the spawn, those females are more susceptible to 
being at lower light condition, mm -hmm. they'll go ahead and bite. You know, when it's kind of up in the day, it seems like they won't, you know, eat yeah. the moving baits as good as they will, you know, something slowing down like Parker's doing, you know. Parker with three in the boat, as it stands right now. Could be number four. Should be. Number four. Powder. It's crazy when you don't get pumped up if it's not over five pounds. <laughs> yeah. You know, every bite has got to be just a giant. Just a matter of time for one of them big old females gets it. Well, he thinks he's around some spawners. He told us that first thing this morning. Time is a key thing. It becomes more more important as the clock ticks away here. Dakota fishing up in the trees here? Or? kind of neat seeing how much different type stuff is going on you yeah know, you got it's kind of fun because I mean it like they talked about you can kind of go fish kind of how you want to it's like you know if you like to go throw a trap type bait you can go throw that in the grass if you want to go throw a wacky worm around the trees you can do that or sight fish you know it's it's a it's a really a special place as far as the lake sets up it's just it's really neat we take for granted that we've got Lake or Howell in the south uh, you know, the south east corner of this fishery at Lake Moultrie. We've got Matt Messer on the opposite end of Lake Moultrie. You've got Dakota Eber on the south side of Marion. You've got Kyle Austin, who's been all over Marion so far this morning and in the Diversion Canal. Four camera views with 50 miles in between each <laughs> shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're, they're spread far and wide this week. Did anybody come out of the stump hole, I guess, really? I wonder if you know, normally used no to, one survived from up there, no. That's normally the, you know, that's always a major player, it seems like, up there to go up there and catch them, but they just move so much you have to find them. And with the wind forecast, not that that deterred people, but man, that's the one place that if it goes, if it start like it's, there's nothing protect, you know, you're just. That you're just, fall, yeah. whenever we fished yeah. up there, there were several of us. Um, I know Clark was up there. Frank Tally. Tally all, we were I all, know. I don't know how many were in there fishing. We'd just see each other once every hour. You'd see somebody. But I remember I left a little bit early, and I said, that wind feels like it's not that strong in here. But, And I remember coming through the bridge, and, you know, you have to run the bank. And we were getting that off those seawalls, that backwash. Mm -hmm. And I know I've never seen so many guys coming in with their graphs laying on their front decks, oh. rods <laughs> ripped off. Because they all, you know, it's only like a 20 minute run, but it was bad. <laughs> Laker Hal, been watching him all day. Very impressive young man, great personality and everything. Imagine how impressionable he was 10 years ago when his dad won the Bassmaster Classic 2014 at Gunnersville. He wants to get my there. My name is Laker Howell. I'm from Gunnersville, Alabama, and my goal fishing opens is to make the Elite Series. My dad is Randy Howell, a former Elite Pro. Randy Howell! He uh, won the Classic in 2014, and that's my ultimate goal is to make it to the Classic and try to win that and be one of the, I think, three or four father-sons that have, that have fished the Classic together. So that'd be, that'd be a really cool, that's a big dream of mine to be on that Classic stage.
tomorrow on Fox, the NASCAR Cup Series gets heated as the best drivers in the world take on the jewel of the desert in Phoenix. Pre-race begins 2.30 Eastern, with the engines firing at 3.30 Sunday on Fox. Racing the clock here. Fancy Cooper <laughs> Complex here in South Carolina. Crazy, Tommy, to see that feature about Laker Howell talking about his dad's classic win a decade ago, and he's the kid who was in the back waving the oh, flag. Man, yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's all in on the classic. You know that's right. And well, he would have been 10 years old, something fourth oh, grader then, yeah. something like that. And yeah. to see his even younger brother in the front of the boat, holding, you know, sitting in the bottom of the boat, he's <laughs> dunking in high school basketball now. You're like, that's crazy. <laughs> Time passes quickly. He's about six foot four now, it seems. Laker has at least six five, six six something. He's very tall. Yeah, he's a, he stands over his, <laughs> his old man, I'll tell you that. <laughs> There's young Laker, back of the boat right there, <laughs> and then his other brother in the front, Oakley. What a classic that was, too, Tommy. That was my first ever classic working with BASS. Yeah, I remember that classic. It's, it's a great effort all four, all three days for Randy, but that final day on that bridge there. Yeah, he was spun around and yeah, he turned around. He was, he was going one way and, and yeah. made a U-turn and I, said something. I just something feel something, me. and that bridge was gold. Had and people then, lined up watching him. And then it was a few years later, Hank Cherry sitting on the same bridge. Yeah, yeah, you know, and ended up <laughs> winning the classic in there doing that too. So. I'm waiting for him to bow up on a big and he hadn't just. Yeah, it was good, like you a know. seven, eight, something like yeah, that. Something, I mean, come just on, let's see what happens. Yeah. Because it's kind of, it's, you know, Scott's caught them a couple of decent fish, but it's kind of at that mid morning low, like we've talked about, mm -hmm. that someone's going to get a, like a difference maker yeah. when no one else is catching one, yeah. for sure. Yeah, Martin has the biggest bag on Fast Track at 24 pounds, four ounces, Laker Howe 23.7. Kyle Austin's over 21.10, and they're Jeez. all within six ounces of each other on their totals. Yeah, Scott's probably on one right now, but he could change the whole day. Uh, boy, no kidding. Because they all have a two pounder She's pretty back. much. She's two of them in their box. Here's the male. Uh oh. That's the male. The male doesn't look small. Oh gosh. Dang it. He'll go. That'll put him in the lead. Yeah, it? I think it will. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, it definitely that's a, will. That's a three pounder. What, well, I got a two pounder? Two pounder, right? My small one. Sometimes you can catch the male, you can catch the female after you catch the male. I've done that plenty of times this week. It's a three nine. Cost me about a pound and a half. Let's just, let's just keep it. A lot of times she'll bite immediately afterwards. Unlike last week when Scott was fishing the Elite Series, we you had to send the mail back <laughs> at, at Fort and yeah, Special exactly. Relief. That was a concern catch and release, so he gets to. Yeah, because a lot of times we'll catch that mail, and if he's real aggressive, as soon as you put him back in the water, that rod's straight back up on the all week. And Scott kind of <clears throat> has a first place finish at Okeechobee, then he didn't have a good Toledo bend, barely missed the cut at Lake Fork, and then back up here. So he's kind of booking two tough elites for his expectations with really, really good opens, mm -hmm. and so. In Okeechobee, his dad had won <coughs> 33 years earlier. She's giant. Now here, if I show her to you on the thing, you're 75. Trip, wow. 50 mm -hmm. years earlier. She's this big Can on the screen. Can you do it again? The screen's about this big, and she's this big on the screen. <laughs> okay. I knew that was the male. It's a new fish. Scott Martin now leads with 79 even. He's 
third place all-time opens total weight. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he has to. first, <laughs> and there's Gerald Swindle, and then him again. But it is far from over. You know Kyle's, I, I mean, in my mind, if I'm Kyle, it's going through his head. You know, he's like, okay, I've got pretty good weight, but he knows he needs another four or five pounder to go in there to still have a shot. Yeah, he's got two two pounders. Yeah. One he put in his two three and one is two pounds nine ounces. Yeah. So, so. two culls and he's yeah. one four pounds worth worth of upgrade would make yeah. it feel oh. way better. Oh, yeah. Big time. How many how far was Scott behind him? Was he a couple pounds or Scott started the day with 53 pounds, three ounces. He was 212 behind Kyle Austin. He was nine ounces behind Laker Hal. Laker was two pounds, three ounces behind Kyle Austin. And if that was a male off that bed, there's no telling how big the female could be that's sitting on that. Yeah, Martin's bag is 2513 right now. 27 yesterday, 27.15, 25.4 on day one. You know, he talked about catching the male first. Whenever I was there, every time that I caught a fish off a tree, it was the female first. That's, so it, that's, I've never you know, heard of that before. And that's what's kind of, and that was always kind of weird. And I had more trouble catching the males than I did the females. So well, I, when you know, think about this, like now you've got all the males setting up beds for the first time this year. You know, like there hadn't been beds prior to this. If this is the first true wave of spawners, they get up there and, and have to really kind of, I feel like they kick it off. Females yeah. get up there, whereas when you get the second, third, fourth waves, it's like a come, as go, come and go yeah. as you please. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Here's a female can pull up anywhere, multiple fish on one bed even. That's I think Hank Cherry said in one of those Santee events he had five fish on one bed. Yeah, I know Benton and them talked about it a lot. They said you'd pull up there and you'd catch one off of it, and by the time you put it in a box, you'd come back and there'd be another one pulled up there <laughs> on you. Like, but like that one tree I caught those four fish off of yeah. in the tournament, there was another one. I could never get it to bite, but it was like they just they found one spot that they wanted to spawn that day, and every fish, was, they were just lined up coming in to get their spot. Well, everything is lined up for Scott Martin with regards to the Opens. He has had a Opens kind of year this year, starting out with a dominating performance down at Lake Okeechobee. Tommy kicked it off with 33 pounds on day one of that event. That got him in the all-time record book for the single day biggest bag and then backed it up there and had a 30-pound average. And by the time championship Saturday was coming around, we were begging on Bass Live for another 10 or 11, 12-pounder, maybe break 100 pounds for three days. You got it as, as close as you could possibly imagine. I mean, 90 is unbelievable for three days of fishing. It's pretty incredible. Cool to see up there with him too. Yeah, yeah, yes. a great, very sentimental yeah. uh, win there. Certainly, rolling there, and the rest of his family looking on as well. One he won't ever forget, that's for sure. Well, let's take a look at Scott Martin today, looking to fire up a little bit more of that magic here. Scott's been predominantly doing what you'd expect with the spawning pattern, Luke. We've seen a lot of chatterbaits, lipless, spinnerbaits, things like that throughout the day. But he has been strictly flipping program, looking at sight fish, finding these beds, whether it's in clear water with his eyes or dirtier water with his electronics. He's being real thorough in the area he's in, too. He's not, he's not really going fast. He's just kind of slowly picking it apart. And like you said earlier, they're coming to him. You know, he, so it's just a matter of time when one more pulls up there and he could pop another six, seven, eight pounder oh, and yeah. more things get very interesting. He yeah, came he over to Bass <coughs> Highly Decker in his first couple years where he just slipped inside the Classic in this last year, he missed it. And this year's something different. He's, he's, going, he's already qualified for next yeah. year's Classic and he's going for another win. And you know, and he can fish different on elites now because he's already qualified yeah. for the Classic. Sure. You're going for a win. You know, I mean, really, I mean, obviously, you know, you want to make as much money as you can and as yeah. much points, but his main goal is to get a blue trophy now, you know, for the rest of the year. You go for the and go fence. You go for the throat, really, every tournament. Instead of fishing to try to make the classic, you're fishing to win. It's, yeah. it's, it, you have a lot more. Mercer said it on stage with me several times now. I went from very consistent to, no, I'm going to go swing for it. And you have those very good tournaments but you're also going to have those bombs. 
Why yeah. don't guys say, I learned how to win? Yeah. Well, and it makes you more bold. I think Brandon Cobb said it. The year that he won Hartwell and Lake Fork, he had two wins before the first half of the season was done. So he started trying things and doing things on the smallmouth swing and almost missed the classic because he, he just, it wasn't working. And he all of a sudden, I need to get back to who I was to win those events because it, you're learning a way to like, when you need to zig, when you need to zag, or hey, this has the recipe of I can win this tournament, not I'm on nothing, so let's just try everything yeah. type of thing. Just now you can start questioning yourself though. Whenever you've got close a few times and you're like, why? What do I need to do? Is it that, you know, it's, and it can just be one fish. Well, last year, oh, yeah. Last year at the Classic, I remember so you were standing with Brian Schmidt and you, and you were kind of lamenting, gosh, when, am I, when is a win ever going to come? And then a month later, <laughs> it you get up. it. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's when you, not when you least expect it, but you don't see it coming. Bed. Mm -hmm. I saw a female swim across it. I could see the big black line. <sighs> I would throw the male back, but it's late <laughs> in the game. It's a three, nine. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it. We've got a short day today. But this fish, it looked like it was a another big one that I need. So we've got 25 pounds or so right now. I wish we had all day to fish, but they're claiming there gonna be some real bad weather this afternoon. It's been pretty pretty bad this morning, but fortunately this has been a protected little pocket. These fish should just keep coming. Need to move that button. That button gets me every once in a while. Scott signed up for this division to be able to fish at home at Okeechobee, get the opportunity that Kyle Austin has fishing at home at Santee Cooper. Now the question is, Tommy, he wins the first open, Scott does, and we're saying he has to at least participate in the next two to make the Classic and ensure it, you know, get his qualification, you know, solidified. If he was to win today, we're going to see a, try to get a clean sweep and all three events in this division get won by the same guy. That would be another record They're territory. Another first, yeah, absolutely. He likes That's Hartwell, just, too. Yeah, and he, he normally does really well at yeah. Hartwell, too, so that, that could be a, <laughs> it, it's a possibility. Gosh. Well, they were talking, I think he said his dad won three in a row one time. Really? Roland? Was it Castledine that won like it one year down in Texas? He won like all divisions of something, like the Coastas or something. He won like... Yeah, and Hanselman has Hanselman, done that as yeah. well, yeah. yeah. I think Christie, the year before he decided to go and try to do it on the national level, he won like all five in his division of, <laughs> of Oklahoma or something yeah. like that. And Randall Tharp's done the same thing when he was in at Gunnersville in Alabama before moving to Florida. Yeah. He won, you know, like every in his division. And <laughs> I think I should take this elsewhere. <laughs> Maybe they voted him out. I don't know. Yeah, he's, he's like, yeah, you're I not fishing with allowed to fish you know? <laughs> Luke, if I was beating up the same guy every day, I'd just keep beating him up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Did you notice last year was the first time in the in the Opens that an elite angler hasn't gone down and won one of them? Really? Huh. I didn't know that. Well, I, I was part of that non-winning group because I went to you follow <laughs> and I fished them. And <laughs> we're coming back to you follow though. I've got to get a little redemption. I had a really, really frustrating two days up there and ended up 23rd or something. Um, so. Have you seen, we'll, we'll have to get back to this after the break, but we'll have you preview you fall a little bit because last year was kind of peculiar how it all went down, but we'll talk about that in a couple minutes. Kyle Austin's making a move, Tommy. Yeah. Uh, time to make a move is now. That's some two hours fishing time left in this day for these competitors, these final 10 on the Santee Cooper Complex. Our SV spool design is made with one thing in mind, casting control. Whether it is casting lightweight baits, skipping, pitching, or casting into the wind, the Tatula SV reels virtually eliminate backlashes when set properly. Now with our 
groundbreaking technology and innovations, backlashes can be a thing of the past. shows you what's below in real time with edge-to-edge -edge clarity and no gaps in coverage. All so you can turn must-watch detail into non-stop action. Only from Humminbird. Every day, we live to serve you. On the farm, our tires work as hard as you do, ensuring a bountiful harvest. We empower your discovery beneath the surface. We stand tall with you to conquer temple. We maximize efficiency in an interconnected world. We help you build the foundation of tomorrow. No matter the job, we know that your success is our success. Because at Maxim Tire, we get the job done. When dawn spreads across the serene waters of South Carolina's largest lake, Clarendon County suddenly turns into a playground. It's a destination for boaters, campers, hunters, hikers, kayakers, bikers, and golfers. St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Santee Cooper Lakes, presented by Seven, is brought to you, sponsored by Mercury, by PowerPole, and by Progressive Insurance. Chad Grigsby on the move right now. Hey guys, it's starting to get antsy. Yeah. They, they know time is They know they're ticking. making their last move of the yeah. day. In reality, where you're going to yeah. move and you got an hour and a half left to fish in that region. That's probably going to be one of your last moves of the day. Yeah. Ronnie McCoy started the day in second place and just has had a rough time of it today. Yep, there's no way I could fish that slow. <laughs> There we go. And it, and it pans out for him, though. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh she came oh. off. Oh, man, that was a big one. What a tough So, <laughs> basically, I just lost one, probably about six pounds, but when we... <clears throat> come across this flat here. There's one lily pad out there, and, and I saw, a, a, you know, what was like a tire, a dark spot, and real sandy around it. And um, thought I'd seen a fish swim off of it. So just let the boat float across it and sat here, made what, three flips in there. Fish bit it the first flip, just ticked it. Second flip, nothing. Third flip, she thumped it. And um, 
I don't know how much harder you can set the hook on one <laughs> and uh, not get it in the boat, but I success successfully did that. So if y'all watching this on live, whatever you saw happen just then, don't do that because <laughs> that one didn't make it. To, that one didn't make it in the boat. Had over 29 pounds yesterday. Had average about that size fish. So I'm uh, just a soft plastic zoom road kill craw in the green pumpkin. Cause he, he's got a bead on it there too, doesn't he's he? Got a little tungsten weight on there and a little glass bead. Hmm. Sometimes downsize a little bit. Get these fish to bite. Running with 25-13 on day one, 29-2 yesterday, really. Showed out there, but his scheme is not working today very well. Wish he get a few missed fish. And he, I asked him if he really, you know, he's more of a local, has, has a lot of areas maybe. Does he have a backup plan from that Moultrie? And he said, you know, I can run around and do some things, but like, I think, I think it should be all right. But we see him leave early mm -hmm. there. Something wasn't going on for him. So he's just, he is in full plan B, plan C, plan D mode. Mm. Two misses in a row, Ronnie. You can kind of tell those bed fishing, they're not just really getting the bait good, no. you know. A little unsettled. I don't know if it's the weather or Ronnie McCoy. Parker Guy, back-to-back Some, -back misses. Sometimes it seems like when you do pitch at those trees with a uh -oh. Texas rig, you might get him. Got him. Big and two. He just kind of, we tell he just bowed yeah, up and let her swim yeah. off. A little step back. <laughs> oh my goodness, please stay on. Please stay on. Please stay on. Please stay on. <laughs> Those fish are so strong. Come on. It's a giant. Mm. Oh, please stay on fish. Please stay on fish. Come on. Got you. Ronnie Cantrell, if you're back home watching on Bass Live, I caught one for you. Whew. Golly. That's why you come to Santee Cooper right there. Whew. Missed that fish twice. Stole my, stole my bait twice. And we got her finally. There might be another one in there. Six pounder out there. Beautiful fish. You're right, Tommy. Super long. These fish just seem like they're I know, maybe they just, five, six years older than other six pounders that are really, you know, shorter and fatter. These are long six pounders. Yeah, man, so I pulled up these group of trees. I haven't fished these. I really haven't even been on this side of this big area I'm fishing. And uh, my place over there on the other side is looking a little bit muddy. So I figured I'd come over here to this side and check it out because it's kind of protected by the wind a little bit. But uh, I came over here and flipped up to the left side of that tree and I caught, I caught a little buck. It was my fifth keeper. And uh, I then flipped to the other side of the tree and had one eat it, set the hook, stole my worm. So I put another one on, flipped back in there, did the same thing, stole my worm again, and then me and him both said it, third time's a charm, I flipped back in there. She ate it, I let her have it for a little bit longer this time, and uh, yeah, just called it a gum six pounder. So, need a couple more of those.
That bumped him up there pretty good too, didn't it? Yeah, he bumped, bumped. Fifth it's, place now, Parker. We talked about it's the haves and the have-nots. The top four or five have really had today. The others have not. So that's bonus points. You know, if you're in the EQ race yeah. and you're an Evan Kung or you're you're someone down there, a Dakota Ebear maybe, every point you can gain today when maybe some people have slacked off from their 25 pounds a day pace are free points for you. Yeah. Kyle Austin now pound and a half back of Scott Martin. So has those two small fish, two three and a two nine. Oh wow. Yeah, I mean he's he's oh uh oh uh oh hold on. That's a big one. Still has that small one to get rid of for sure. That's a giant. Mm. That's what we need boys. come off. I thought I could see his work. No, no, no. Don't say that. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, just, just get that out of the way. Being good and patient with it, at least. Don't want to horse it too much out of excitement. Oh, oh man. Go. That could have put his classic oh. in his grass. Give me some of that, dude. Holy crap. We got us a giant. Oh my God. I did not think it was that big. Oh my. Did you see it do a backflip? Oh, look at that one. Man, that was cool. A dang two pounder. That's the ones we need to win this thing. Be a five pound kill too. Oh man, that was that huge. Was, was one of his biggest of the day for sure. He started with a 611. Started the day with the lead. Got locked in a race. Race at the top with Scott Martin. And he has fired a big shot in the waning hours of championship Saturday. Don't give up. Discover the Dakota Lithium DL Plus 135 amp hour battery. With dual purpose 135 amp hour deep cycle capacity and an impressive 1000 cold cranking amps, this innovative battery is equipped with even heat technology, allowing charging even in temperatures below 32 Fahrenheit and boasts power gauge Bluetooth connectivity for real time monitoring. Dakota Lithium, engineered to power your passion from bow to stern.
St. Croix Bassmaster Open at St. Cooper. In less than two weeks, we kick off the World Championship, though, the Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Classic presented by Jockey Outdoors, the 2024 edition. There's the defending champion there, Jeff Gustafson. Going to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The BOK Center will be rocking for sure. Grand Lake of the Cherokees will be our fantastic playing field. Cannot wait to see all of the action. We got one of the favorites sitting here with us today, Luke Palmer. So that doesn't get you more fired up, Luke. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I appreciate you taking some time out because I know you're focusing on that. Just moments ago, though, we saw something that got our attention for sure. Kyle Austin. Yeah, he he might have found the fish that gets him to that next year's classy to Ray Roberts. That that's a giant. Ooh. He needed that more than anything today to kind of get, I think, maybe his confidence back. I think he was starting to kind of question a little bit. And uh, that right there is big. He's, major. Really, he's balanced the game plan perfectly. Started out every morning really good with his current seam where that flow is coming through from Marion to Moultrie. Normally leaves there with a good limit. Did not leave there with a good limit today. Had three good ones and a small one. Comes to the trees knowing he needs one good bite. Hasn't gotten it the rest of the day like you said, Luke. Seven pounder. What a huge fish. Cole's a two pounder and it puts him not only in the lead now, Tommy, got a considerable margin. Yeah, three pounds of 12 ounce margin as it stands right now with an hour and a half of fishing time left in this day. So it's really a, well, it's, it's going to be something else at the end there for Kyle, for Scott Martin and Laker Howell. They're going to need another big one. Yeah. Everyone else on that leaderboard is going to have to think in terms of a couple of big ones yes, in order yes. to get themselves back in the game. So we are headed for a very dramatic conclusion to this tournament here lot to see a lot to come they obviously don't know bass track they don't know how it is but you know through that day when you have a, a couple hour lull luke and you start to question yourself like you said and so for that seven pounder pays off he now he now can refocus and know i've got four great ones i need Baby. one more oh, so matt adams definitely needs this one to jump in maybe the top five no it's not it's no. three pounder I thought it was bigger than that gotta have me in the grass i am the three pounder it's a baby a baby. He ugly spot on him too. But you know what that is? That's number four. So God, I thought he's a big one. You're at me in the grass. Maybe I just wanted him to be a big one. You know? I'm just trying to wish it to fruition. Two four. Kyle Austin is putting his name in the record book. Yesterday at 31 pounds, 8 ounces, that's fifth all time in the opens. And his 82.12 right now on Bass Track, which could be up or down a little bit, is second all time to Scott Martin's 90 pounds, 6 <laughs> ounces from Okeechobee. Yeah. And he's trying Five to fight off ago. Scott Martin. Yeah. 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 Come on. Scott's not trying to win to win. He's trying to win to stop Kyle from beating his <laughs> records. That's what it is. Uh, we need Laker Scott to catch a good one just to make it real close. Oh, yeah. That way we yeah. can just. Laker don't have that much time left. No, he'll have to start running back yeah. soon. Yeah. yeah. And he may have a bigger bag than what Bass Track says there. You know, like who knows? That's since always we a possibility. Yeah, we haven't that's, heard that's it. That's not the final word on, on the well, way. It says, says he's 5'9 back and he's got a 2 1 in there. So a, yeah, seven, just one good 7 yeah, pounder. Pounder. Yeah. Eight pounder. So. His dad was right. He needs a nine, nine pounder. That's well, right. right. Yeah, that is yeah. exactly right. Always right. Yeah. Father knows best. I've heard that <laughs> term before. Until new evidence <laughs> appears. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. McCoy lost a good one about yeah. 15 minutes ago. This one not that not as big as the one that came off, but much needed. Come on in here, little fella. We might have number one after <laughs> about four hours of fishing this morning. Let's check it and see. This one's gonna come in at. Thank you, Jesus. It does feel good to get One in the boat now, that's good news for Ronnie. Ronnie McCoy, back to Laker Howell. He's fired up. You can just tell, like his demeanor, oh, yeah. he's just pumped up. He's He's excited to be there, and oh, here we go. Uh -oh. Okay, uh -oh. now this is important. Yes, it is. Very he is bowed up on him, too. Oh, 
it's, uh, it's one a, of the giants he needs. A but giant, but it's, a, uh, it's healthy. That's a good it's one. A pretty yeah, that's good a good one. one. That's no, a good no. one. He's got a 2-1 in the boat. He's Something a, like a yes, how about them <laughs> apples, you know, like that kind of deal. I hate that we lost Lakers Mike earlier in the day, but there was a torrential downpour on the way, and he ran the farthest of anyone else yeah. on the water. So we lost him from somewhere from takeoff to fishing. But what a day for this 21, 22-year-old. He's saying, oh, my oh God. Oh, my gosh, five-pounder, <laughs> he said. I read his lips, five-pounder. Shows oh, almost six. Oh, that is yeah. oh, almost. Or is that, will that be, hope. that's in tens so, or hundreds. I don't know. So is it, that like? It went 0, 9, 10, 11. I don't think I it was ounces. decimal. I think it was ounces there. Okay. okay. Maybe a five and three quarter. That gives him. Get him over 25 pounds for the day. He had 28 yesterday. 25 day one. Out of breath. Important Excited. step right there for sure for Laker Howell. Got to make sure he calls here. Yeah. Do not get excited. <laughs> Do not man. mess that Do up. Do not <laughs> go up to the front of the boat. Nothing good up at the front of the boat right now. <laughs> no. I'm about to pass I'm out. To, I'm trying to process this. I'm about to pass out. <laughs> what else can we phrase out for Throw him there? Throw one fish out, please. Yes, yes. For the live crew's sake, we've seen someone have a culling infraction on live and lose the tournament. Don't let that be the reason. He's looking for that two, three. If it is a three, two, and one. A, if it is three and three quarter pound cull, uh, that'll put him right there at 81. Yeah, I mean, it's In second place, yeah. yeah. Put him at 81 pounds or so. Get up and start casting. Oh my God. <laughs> now, you can fish. Like, now you can you fish. Got, you now got you five in the one. Now you can fish. He's like, okay. Yeah. You, you, need, you need a six. 11.30 Eastern time. We've got an hour and a half left to fish. Maybe 40 minutes of run time, at least for Laker, 45. So he's got about 30 to 45 yeah, minutes not, left of fishing time. that much time, yeah. We'll be able to watch him when he leaves and see how much time he gives himself. Yeah. But what a good day he has had, at least threatening Kyle and Scott yeah. up at the top. We'll still need about a six-pounder to get to really near uh, Kyle Austin. Have a shot. Kyle Austin's still the man on top, started the day. The top spot to Laker. Wow, he has shown that he's got it. He belongs out here for sure. The early morning lull could yeah. be over with. It's we over might, with. We might start I seeing some right. big ones. I mean, we've yeah. in the last what, 20 minutes, we've seen two or three good ones. So. The plot thickens. The, the lull is over. Man, everything's good news coming across right now. Scott Martin, what a, what a year he's had. His Division I Opens competition. I don't even want to consider his, his average weight over what is now six days of fishing. Oh, no doubt about it. And if a Laker Howell would win, how about this incentive? For whoever wins this, whether it's Scott, more motivation, because he's going to go to the Classic in two weeks and have to be in the Expo. Same thing for Kyle Austin, representing his sponsors, knowing that this is the last time uh. I'm going to be in the Expo. I get to be out in a boat next class, and that would be something very cool. Or if Laker, Chad Griggs, any of these guys make a run. There's your unofficial leaderboard as it stands right now. Hour and a half, probably much less than that fishing time. Hour and a half till they have to report back in. Coverage is going to continue at noon Eastern time. Bassmaster.com. Thanks so much for being with us today on FS1 in South Carolina.